Hello, hello, hello. What's up tonight, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine Thursday? I almost said Tuesday. I don't know. One of those days. I think it's Thursday. Let's go with Thursday to y'all. Good to see ya, good to see ya, good to see ya. What is up, Lustful Jeans Muck Paint Paladin? Good to see ya, Elf Patrick. How is everyone doing tonight? I am super excited. Like, this event looks so, so super cool. I've been waiting since he announces for the stream tonight so we can take it to uh, actually check out this event because this event looks just so much fun. Uh, standard throughout the ages. This is a of, it, it, blah, 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 blah. This is an event that has 16 of the best decks in, well, mostly best decks in Magic's history. You join the event, you get one of them, you play three matches, and then you join and do another one. So we're going to check out some of the best decks in the history of Standard tonight in this super sweet event. We have a new subscriber, uh, Dragon Bones. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dr. Shandor, welcome you as well. Big soup cheer for you. How do I feel about the Twitch leagues? Um, well, on one hand, I think websites being hacked is probably a bad thing in general. On the other hand, I don't know. Like, it, me personally, I guess I don't feel like it impacted me in any specific way. Uh, like, I don't know. Uh, I the Having, like, earnings and stuff out there, like, whatever. Like, I could care less about that. Uh, I couldn't care less about that. So, I guess, like, I guess I wish it didn't happen, but from my personal perspective, I think it's not a big deal for me personally. It was annoying to have to go through and, like, change all the passwords and stuff like that, but really, that was, that was a big thing. If you haven't heard about it, there was a big Twitch hack. You should definitely change your password. You should definitely uh, update your everything, turn on two-factor authentication, all that kind of stuff because of this big Twitch leak, so, so anyway, uh, yeah, uh, you definitely change the password and change the stream key and all that kind of stuff, so it should be safe and fine, but, uh, so how's everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone when it is doing spectacular today miss the standard games no we we're just talking about the event actually looking at the deck list and then we're about to jump right into it so yeah so that's the plan today we're playing standard through the ages we're playing on magic online we are playing classic standard decks i kind of wonder i wonder why they didn't put this on uh on magic arena it seems like they could with what they've done with cube and stuff and with the random cards that show up in, like, Momir, I imagine they could add these cards and do them on Arena. So it'd be kind of sweet to see in the future, although I like Magic Online. So I'm playing uh, fine with playing it on Magic Online. But how do you feel about the leaked beard quality and how you were only rated fourth? Wait, no. There was a beard ranking? And I missed it, and I was rated fourth. I was hoping for a punt ranking. I thought that would have been sweet. I would. That's would interest me. Like how much everyone makes, whatever. Like <laughs> that's not really something that's especially interesting to me. Who makes the most punts? That would be interesting. Beard ranking. If I'm only fourth, I, I'm gonna have to have issues. I'm gonna have to go shave the people from one to three if uh, if that is actually true. Smart trivia. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Sent you a ninja tempo deck. I saw it in my box i was doing commander clash i haven't actually got to look at it yet but it is on my list so i'll be getting back to you uh getting back to you shortly lucid welcome you as well the hype train is running big scoop cheer for you thank you thank you thank you so here's my here's my thingy on money i don't know if i've talked about this before but since it's the topic of the day with this switch thing my theory on money is money <sighs> so i've not had money and then I've, I've never been rich, but I have been able to, like, I just bought a house and I've been able to live, you know, relatively comfortably. And my, my thinking on money is, <laughs> my thinking on money is, money doesn't really make you happy. If you have no money and you are stressed about how you're going to eat the next day, or if your car breaks down, how you're going to fix it and how you're going to get to your job if your car breaks down, or how your kids are going to have shoes on their feet or whatever, then more money is going to make you happy. Once you can get to a point where you're not having to think that way, like, how do I get my next meal? Can I pay my bills next month? Am I going to get evicted because I can't pay my rent or pay my mortgage or whatever? Then more money is. It, it just, it, it doesn't make a difference. It, it really honestly, truly doesn't. The difference between making whatever, $75,000, $80,000 and $2 million, it might seem like a lot. And I guess if you're someone who wants to, I don't know, spend crazy money on random things, but in terms of actual happiness, it really doesn't matter. So, so I, that's what I want to see. If I had my perfect world, <laughs> everyone would make $80,000 or something, $75,000, like whatever that number is. I'm not an economist. I don't know. I don't know that 
the exact number, but that's how I would love to see the world be. That everyone has their needs taken care of. Everyone has enough money to live on. And then no one has to be stressing out about those things that really do make life really hard. Like if you know people who are in that position, it's stressful. If you've ever lived without money, it's definitely stressful. So that's how, that's how I view things. So the difference to me between making enough money to live on and not have to worry about paying my bills and making double that really makes no difference to me. <laughs> like literally, honestly, not a single bit of difference. I just really don't care. That's my only concern. So, so that's where I'm at. So what streamer makes, you know, $10,000 more than the other one? Like to me that all those numbers are the same. Like if you're to the point where you can live comfortably and pay your bills and not have to have that on your mind all the time and be thinking about that all the time, then you're good. If you're not in that position, we should be helping you get to that position because I, that's not a good position for people to be in. So, so that's my take on, on money, basically, uh, with the big Twitch League thing. So, so anyway, let's do our reminders and let's talk about this event. We're not going to just jam about, uh, about Twitch Leagues all afternoon. So, anyway, replay YouTube this week. Find all the old streams, including this one in the future. Normal YouTube. If you missed the whole sticky fingers against the odds, you should definitely check it out. It is, it's a really sweet one. Tomorrow, we're going to Modern to play some new cards. In Modern, our first Macho Brew in modern featuring in a stride midnight hunt so check that out as well and i even recorded a i even recorded a, a, a memer dream this week there was a deck that came along that i just i i couldn't resist i couldn't resist it was posted uh magic.gg one of the list wizards published it was just so weird and janky i had to try it so we're gonna have a memer dream for the first time in a while on sunday as well so lots of sweet stuff coming up on the youtube evil gara welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big soup cheer for you hey what's up Cordius? good to see you uh big soup cheer for you thank you thank you thank you a reminder that our sponsor tonight is card kingdom and if you need some magical cards you can get them at cardkingdom.com even get a goldfish sticker let them know you want one and they'll hook you up they're super cool like that so if you need Innistrad midnight hunter whatever sort of the animist a dowsing dagger if you're richard or uh, whatever you can get them all over there so thank you to card kingdom for supporting the show otherwise merch page tokens t-shirts play mat good way to support the stream and the channel and the site donations always appreciated never required two dollars more gets your message read on stream and let's talk about this event so what are we playing tonight we are playing standard through the ages so we talked about this before this is an event on magic online where you get a deck out of 16 decks classic standard decks through the ages you get to pick one of them you play three matches against other decks from that 16 deck pool so here are the options and this is important pay attention because i want you all to let me know what decks we should pick my i haven't played one of these events i've been waiting for the stream tonight to actually play it so i was figuring y'all could vote and we could figure out what decks we want to play i think you get all 16 options and get to pick any one of them fidgets welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big scoop cheer for you thank you thank you thank you if i'm understanding it right you can pick any one of those options. So here are the 16 decks we're going to have to choose from if I'm understanding this properly. So Sly from the early 90s, the first mono red aggro deck in Magic's history, really important to the evolution of Magic. I don't know how good it is anymore, but it was a watershed moment where people figured out mana curves and it was a really, really big deal. Callblade, obviously one of the best standard decks of all time, at least of its era, how it would compete against the broken decks from newer standards. I don't know. But back in 2011, this was the deck. This was bannings. Bannings didn't happen back then. The, there hadn't been a banning in a decade. And they banned Jace. They banned Stoneforge Mystic because of this deck. Whoa, we got a ton of gift subs. Ted the Prudy handing out gift subs to G Sumbro, Kroger, Schur, Hoobergate, and Borrero. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. We have Jund from Shards of Alara era. This was the deck that kept Callblade in check, or at least jason check before the rotation of blood braid elf so blood braid elfing into like uh, into blightnings is one of the biggest hits in the deck just random good stuff brood made dragons we got lorwyn era fairies a crim drago control deck reckless thought mage welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big soup cheer for you hey what's up doug how are you lisa aristocrats yeah i think Le uh, lisa is actually a really powerful commander so classic jund uh classic delver we talked about Delver not being good, maybe this time in standard. Well, back when it was first in standard and you had Snapcaster Mages. Oh, this is actually a later version. Interesting. The early versions of Delver had Mana Leak in them. This is a later powered down version of Delver, I think, to some extent, because I'm not seeing the Mana Leaks in there. But anyway, this is Delver, Geist of St. Traft. No Geist of St. Traft either. 
Hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, it was that era of Standard. A little bit of a weird build of Delver, but this was when Delver was really good in Standard. Velikut Ramp, uh, Primeval Titans, Velikuts, Avenger of Zendikars, go big, ramp, 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 try to burn your opponent out with Velikut. Madness, this was before my time, never played the original Madness deck. Affinity, maybe the, wow, so many subs tonight. Thank you so much, everyone. Whale Lord, Andy got gift subs to Tomito, Vulture, Autowigs, Costa Lasta, and Demerich. Welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big soup for you thank you thank you thank you most recent deck i think is uh the band omneth deck from last season affinity might be the most broken deck on the list vehicles from keldheim or keladash standard rather mono really old mono black control like viscera the dreadful cabal coffers Mono Black Control from 20 years ago. Zoo from the infamous Lightning Helix top deck era, just going aggro with Savannah Lions and Watch Wolves. Five Color Control, which is a deck I would be interested in playing. Uh, Cruel Ultimatum, Mold Rifters, Plume Veils, all the Vivid Lands to try to cast your spells. Splinter Twin from when it was in standard. Battle of Witch, which we gotta play Battle of Wits. We gotta play Battle of Wits. I don't even know if Battle of Wits is, uh, is good. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Apparently someone top aided with it once, but we're gonna give it a try for perhaps goblin bidding one of the original goblin decks and the most recent one which i don't think we're gonna pick omnath uros kenris the only reason to pick this would be to see if it's actually busted compared to older decks in the format we got a new donation v house hey seth i've been thinking for a while after reading an article about restricted cards and vintage and wondering what you think of implementing restricted cards to modern standard legacy would help with broken cards like Yu-Gi-Oh does uh, would it help with broken cards like Yu-Gi-Oh does in their game or not well v house uh W Van House, thank you for the donation. Definitely appreciate it. There's pluses and minuses, I would say. So these are the decks. Let me know which one you're interested in because we're about to jump into this event. I think there's pluses and minuses to uh, two restrictions compared to... Uh, going to be played on Magic Online. It's not available on Magic uh, Arena, unfortunately. Um... So, so there's pluses and minuses to restriction. Upside is you don't got to ban cards, which is nice. You can still play with the cards. It makes banning slightly less painful. On the other hand, uh, the downside is it makes games revolve around who draws their restricted card. And as we see in Vintage, Vintage decks, sure, you only get one of each restricted card, but those cards are so powerful that many of those uh, decks are built around tutoring up tons of cantrips, tons of card draws to find those broken cards. So it does have a pretty big, a pretty big impact on how games actually play out. So, uh, I could see trying it, but I'm not convinced it would actually be a good thing. So anyway, those are the decks. I think it is time to do our first event, and we're going to play this for the stream tonight. So I'm hoping we can get through several too many of these decks, ideally, and let's jump in and see what happens. Uh, so I see I see votes for goblins. Can we do a poll with everything? Uh, yeah, if anyone... Can we put a 16 option poll up? Is that actually a, is that actually a possibility? Or do we need to narrow it down first? Okay, so here's our here's our options. We have five minutes to decide what deck that we want. Can we, can we actually view the deck list? What happens? I'm afraid to double click them that it's gonna actually pick it. Ooh, it would be nice if you could actually just see them. Oh, goes that. Oh, you can't see all the options, can you? Uh, so down here, is there a way I can? Okay, there we go. Now you can actually, now you can actually see them all. So here are the. So here are the options. Which one do you want to see the most? Mono black control. So okay, let's let's do this in an easy way. Decks I'm not especially interested in. Omnath is a big one. So let's not vote for Omnath. I'm also not super interested in fairies. We've played fairies in like modern. We know how fairies work. So those two would be the two that I would lean towards not playing. Kind of the same with vehicles. Like if you really want to see vehicles, I'm okay with playing it. But that wasn't a fairly recent standard. We kind of know what it does. Uh, so I'd prefer the older ones. I kind of tempted to start with Battle of Wits. <laughs> I mean, how could you, how could you not go with Battle of Wits? Just to see. Hey, first three by Ben uh, able to jump in. To love the content on Goldfish. What are you playing tonight? Hey, welcome, Man of Forge Jankford. We are playing Standard Throughout the Ages. This is classic standard, a classic standard event. Start with the oldest one. You want to start with the oldest one? The oldest one would be Sly. Are you interested in Mono Red? Was Battle? You know what? Okay, let's let's do it. Let's do it. I'm doing it. I'm selecting Battle of Wits. Wait, I gotta keep selecting. Okay. Okay, here we here we go. Here we go. Was Battle of Wits a legit standard deck? I don't think so. Oh my god, I can't even look through this whole deck list. 
<laughs> There's too many cards. I believe that Huey Jensen took and top aided a GP with Battle of Wits. I think that's as legitimate as it was. So this deck, it's got 92 lands, 92 lands. It's got a bunch of counters uh, back from when counters are good. There's like literal counter spell in this deck. It's got a bunch of random removal. It's got ways to dig through your library. That's probably the most important thing. We can tutor with like Insidious Dream. We can tutor with Tainted Pact to try to find our Battle of Wits. If you don't know Battle of Wits itself, Battle of Wits says, it's a five minute enchantment and it says at the beginning of your upkeep, if there are 200 or more cards in your library with the game. So so the challenge of this is we need to play a ridiculous number of cards. We have 244 cards in our deck. Then we just got to find Battle of Wits. That's it. We find it. We get it on the battlefield. We win the game. We are rewarded with a one card combo if we're willing to play 244 cards in our deck. So I guess we do it. Let's do it. I, I don't know if you need any more expl explanation than that. It's kind of just a, a 244 card control deck, more or less, with a ton of tutors to try to find Battle of Wits. So... Let's, uh, let's try Battle of Wits. Let's try Battle of Wits. I imagine this is not one of the most pop, uh, powerful decks in the field, I would guess. If Moto wins, we win. <laughs> I like I like that rule. Hey, what's up, Mind Zap Throw? How are you? The sideboard, yeah, the sideboard we didn't even really look at. We have Circle of Protection Black. That's going to be one. <laughs> Hibernation, Bounce All Greed Permanence, Slay. Boy, green, green must have been good during this meta. There's four hibernations and four slays. It seems like mono green was an issue. Shadow Mage Infiltrator, some Finkel action for control. Did anyone actually play standard during this during this era? <laughs> I'm curious if anyone actually played it. I mean, as many tutors as we can muster. I don't know about a ton of tutors. Maybe that was an exaggeration, but we got Diabolic Tutor. We got Insidious Dreams. I believe there's a uh, tainted pack, so we have at least at least three different tutors and a ton of can traps. So, all right, here we go. Here we go. Oops, match one, battle of wits, classic standard, and uh, <laughs> and we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. We're up, we're up against the walkie, dude. <sighs> hmm. <laughs> this deck, this event's so sweet. I just, I love classic standard decks. That's going to be the weird thing about this event, is these decks are not built to... Psychotag would have been a good inclusion, I agree with that. Um, these decks are not really built to play against each other. So our sideboard, it's for like a green aggro deck. I don't think there's really a green aggro deck in this field. So we're actually just playing like literal decks from the distant past. They're not, you know, manipulated in a way to uh, <laughs> to try to fight against each other, sideboard against each other. I think we got to... We, we, we don't have a battle of it, so we might as well mulligan. I like the amount of ramp this has. <laughs> Reborn Volcano. Lands have gotten so much better over the years. Uh, this is, I mean, we already mulliganed once. This is probably fine. Put the Chromatic Spear to the bottom and just ramp into Prophetic Bolt. Yeah, we got the we got the good matchup against Mill. That's upside to Battle of Wits. I remember people playing Battle of Wits, but I don't remember it being a legit competitive deck. Uh... 007 standard was when I remember there being uh, it being best. I played red black braids until I got convinced to play Tog. Yeah, Tog would have been a good. That's like a really classic deck. That's one of the one of the old standard decks that I know the best. I'm kind of surprised they didn't have a Tog deck in there. All right. Well, so uh, we have two ramp spells. We have a prophetic bolt. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Maybe people play this spiky. I was hoping people would play this and just select like the the cool old decks, but if everyone's snapping off Omnath, that's gonna be a little sad. <laughs> okay, can our deck from 20 years ago keep up from the deck that was just banned last year at Standard? <laughs> oh, are we winning? We're we're trying. We're giving her a best shot. Yeah, so I, I'm assuming Katera Triumph. This has got to be the Omnath deck, and I'm really scared. Path. Have, this is like current standard. Okay, about it. Lotus Cobra. I mean, we do have good counters. That's something. If our opponent just plays Omnath, uh, Omnath next turn, though, we're probably just dead. All right, Mana Rock number one. Charcoal Diamond, go. Pass the turn. Yeah, we're trying Battle of Wits first. We're gonna we're gonna jump around. I imagine that the Omniath deck is one of the most powerful decks in the field. All right, come on. No, no, no Omnath, no Omnath, please. 
I'm actually kind of surprised they put such modern decks in there. I guess it's kind of cool to see like how old cards mes uh, match up against brand new cards, but boy, the <laughs> they just didn't have things like Uro 20 years ago. <laughs> they just they just didn't exist. They didn't make cards like this with this amount of text on it that long ago. Uh, so one two do we kill this i mean the good news is if we ever just draw battle of wits i think we win like that's that's all we need i guess we just leave up a counter the dromar dromar's charm counter gain five or kill something yeah play city of brass so we can counter or kill something this turn and then prophetic bowl and just pray really hard to the magic god that we find battle of wits <laughs> hey bear hey buddy Bear. Hey, buddy. Hey, sleepy puppy. You want to see the stream? <laughs> oh, I'm going to try and get Bear on stream. He's just so passed out at the moment. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to get him up. He looked up at me for a minute and then just and then just passed out. Bear. Bear, the stream wants to say hi. Come here, bud. Come here. Come here. Come sit with daddy. Come here. I wish you could I wish you could see him. Here, here, bud. Come sit with me for a minute. Come here. Come here, bud. There you go. There you go, bud. There you go. There you go, sleepy puppy. Are you okay? Are you okay? Can I, can you say hi? Can you say hi to the stream? See that's a microphone. You can say hello. Hello. <laughs> uh. All right, opponent's passing. Oh, he's he's gonna be a he's gonna be a big boy. He's already he's already a big boy. He's he's so good though. He's like he's been so amazing. Hey buddy, hey buddy. Everyone wanted to see you. I'm sorry to wake you up. Every are you gonna go back to sleep? Okay, you can you can sleep on my lap. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a big boy. Oh, a bear emote would be awesome. Yeah, he's. <laughs> He's passed out on the lap now, but uh, you saw him for a second. <laughs> I think he will be more active at some future streams. He, I took him this afternoon while I was recording Commander Clash to, uh, to play with one of his litter mates that uh, a friend has that lives close by. Are you done? Are you want to go lay back down? Here you go, bud. Say goodbye. Say goodbye to everyone. Say goodbye. Say goodbye, stream. Say goodbye. <laughs> okay, bud. Okay, go go back to sleep. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to wake you up. <laughs> oh yeah, we gotta get we gotta get a berry emote. A berry emote is too perfect to pass up. Yeah, he's he's passed back out. All right, let's uh let's kill this. Uh, yeah, he's really sleepy. He went and he went and had uh, some puppy playtime with with one of his litter mates today, and. Uh, <laughs> That always tires him out. So he, he got back like an hour ago. He'll be less tired some future streams, or when he uh, when he gets bigger. All right, so we gotta we gotta get this battle of wits win. All right, puppy distraction over. Puppy distraction over. I mean, I think that having a uh, having a Roddy be a lap dog is is fine because I'm also pretty big. So so he uh, we we get along together that way. I think. I'm convinced since there's a sleepy puppy on his lap, all future FTD Goldfish episodes. Usually, usually he doesn't sit on the lap too much, honestly. He usually passes out on the floor next to me. That's that's kind of the norm, but but you gotta get him up for the for the camera. Another Lotus Cobra, sure. I mean, maybe this isn't going that badly. Pony's only got three cards in hand. We have a million diamonds. <laughs> we are we are officially rich about it so yeah anyway that's that's bear okay sure <laughs> spike field hazard your face sure well come on battle of wits it would be so good and we're killing ourselves with city of brass well we're gonna kill a lotus cobra four cards deep for a Dromar's charm. Okay. 
Well, those are four non Battle of Wits cards out of the way. We're getting closer. We're getting closer to the Battle of Wits. Moment passes. It is kind of fun because every draw step is exciting. Because every draw step could theoretically be Battle of Wits. And if we ever do draw it, then I think we just win. Oh, we need a... If we had a companion... <laughs> we're lacking a companion. How many play points is this event? This event is uh, 60 play points. And if you go 2-1, and one, you get your play points back. If you go 3-0, you make play points and get a treasure. If you go less, then you then you end up losing out. He, he is super cute. And he's been just, like, the best puppy. Like, way better than I... Ooh. Way better than I even expected. Like... I, I've been blown away just with how good he's been. All right, let's draw us some cards. Concentrate a bit. Draw some cards. Looking for the bet. Ooh, Insidious Dreams. Additional cost to cast this. Okay, 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 okay. I think that's good. Pass the turn. On our opponent's end step. Insidious Dream. Maybe Battle of Wits is busted. Maybe it's actually the best deck in this event. Are we gonna are we gonna beat Omnath with Battle of Wits? I think it might be happening. Opponent. If they play Omnath, we probably got to counter it. I don't think we can let that live. Opponent plays a land, passes. Here we go. Here we go. Tap up, tap up, tap up. Tap up. Insidious Dreams. Discard. And discard. And discard. Okay. Tutor for three cards, put him on top. We're gonna get a Battle of Wits win. Oh, we're not in stream mode, you're right. Yeah, I'll go, in, hang on, let's let's do this tutor correctly and then we'll go in stream mode. So, we will take, and there's probably some like awesome line that you're supposed to do with this, but I think we will take Battle of Wits. And then we will take Battle of Wits. And then we will take Battle of Wits. Moto's lagging. It is not like searching a 200-card library. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Let us take through Battle of Wits, Moto. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, top, top, top. All right. Can you stop it, opponent? You know what's coming. It is coming. Battle of Wits three turns in a row. We untap. One, two, three, four, five. Battle of Wits, counter backup, 227 in the library, pass the, we're doing it. We're taking down the Bannable deck from our most recent standard with Battle of Wits. <laughs> oh, about it. Yeah, Insidious Dreams is a card that I've never played. It actually does seem decent. I could, now that I am remembering this card, I could see playing it in uh, in Commander. It seems like it could be a reasonable Commander card. That would be so sad to actually have Battle of Wits set up and lose because of lag. Oh, or Moto crashing. Opponent. I mean, as long as it isn't killing us or interacting with Battle of Wits, I don't think... Well, okay. That's... That's scary enough that we will counter it. Counter the Genesis Ultimatum. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> We got him, an opponent, <laughs> wondering what went wrong, Uros, Lotus Cobras, Omnas, <laughs> can't keep up with the 244 card pile, alright, let's look at this, <laughs> let's look at this wonderful sideboard, does Toy target green creature, it can't be regenerated, that seems, that seems good, Omnath, Uro, etc., Return all green permanents to their owner's hand. Eh? What is... I don't even know what all of these cards do, I don't think. Hobble. Can't attack, can't block if it's black. <laughs> oh, they used to have so many random, like, color hosers in old cards. Hamasuke! Welcome to the fishbowl. What are we cutting? Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We got to have some bad cards in this pile. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. We could probably just throw... We could probably just throw more cards in, honestly. I don't know if there's anything... What does Urza's Rage do? Three damage. If you kick it ten... Yeah, that seems... 
Urza's Rage seems pretty bad. It is not aged that well. All right, we'll get rid of the Urza's Rages and get rid of... Ooh, we got memory lapses. Um, counter non-creature spell, destroy non-black creature. Wild Research, another tutor. All right, 248 card special. <laughs> good enough when are crimson vow cards uh spoilers starting crimson vow spoilers should be starting somewhere around the end of the month we don't actually have a exact date announced yet my guess is looking at the where's the hang on let's see uh so i believe it should be Maybe the 25th or the 28th would be my guess. And then I think the full spoiler needs to be done the 5th. My prediction would be... My prediction would be spoilers start the 28th. They end the 5th. Commander spoilers on the 8th. And then digital release on the 11th. And paper release... Uh, like pre-release uh, the 12th and then release this weekend. So that would be that would be my guess, but it hasn't actually been confirmed. Oh my god, we got a battle of wits in hand. We cannot cast a single spell. But we have battle of wits in hand. Oh, do we keep it because we have battle of wits or do we ship it? Do we ship it because we can't cast anything? Oh yeah, I think we got a mulligan. It's so tempting because Battle of Wits is just, that is a card. Ooh, this finds a Battle of Wits, though. Addle. Okay. Terminate's good. Let's get rid of the Sky Diamond. All right, well, we got Tainted Pack. That can find the Battle of Wits, and that can do everything we need. Yeah, we do have a lot of tutors. This seems, this seems reasonable. Not a bad Battle of Wits in. So what do you think the strongest... What do you think the strongest deck is in this pool of decks? Well, Volcano, go. I'll put the... I will add these deck lists. Hang on. I will add these deck lists to the deck command. There we go. All right, there's a Lotus Cobra. Yeah, Twin... I think Affinity is probably really good. Twin's... Twin's probably decent. I thought the Omniath egg would be really good, but apparently it can't be Battlewoods. <laughs> Kara Ashmore for the 55th month. Welcome to the Fishball. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Innocent blood. Get rid of the Lotus Cobra. I mean, the good news is, even though threats have gotten insane uh, over the most you know the most you know, the last decade of magic or last few years of magic back in the old days the spells were really good splinter twin Cobblade, affinity yeah those seem like uh, those seem like good choices does affinity have skull clamp i would actually oh, threats good well we got the good spells our opponent has the good threats does affinity have skull clamp that's actually a good question I don't have all the deck lists memorized. This is actually the first one I played. Affinity does not have Skull Clamp. So it does have Artifact Land. So post Skull Clamp banning, but before but before the full banning. Hmm. So we need another blue source. Let's just City of Brass go. Leave up the exclude. Maybe we just have the interaction to stop this deck. Also, start thinking about uh, <laughs> what deck you want to play next. Because I want to get through a few of these decks, ideally, tonight. Ugh. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. Okay. We can't exclude... Oh, this is, this is bad. This is bad. I don't know if we can beat this Felidary Retreat. I don't know if our deck even has cards that can beat the Felidary Retreat. UHF77, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super chat for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, they went with vehicles from kind of the that general era over energy. But yeah, I was a little surprised by that too. Well, let's uh, taint a pack and see what happens. Taint a pack is a weird card. Exile the top cover of our library. We can put it in our hand unless it has the same name is another exiled card 
So once we get two cards with the same name, where are we seeing these cards? Nowhere? It's just telling us the name? What does Probe do? <laughs> I don't remember what Probe does. We're gonna have to look up Probe since I actually don't see the card anywhere. Uh, probe, three mana. Draw three, then discard two. If it was kicked, target player discards. Oh, that card. That was a good card in limited. Um, no. Wild research. That is gonna find, eh, yes. So wild research can find our battle awaits. We need the man, oh, hibernation's not looking great. Well, okay, wild, play the sulfurous Briggs, wild research. We need to tap from red mana one of these days. Apparently we can't undo. Okay, so well, hmm. All right, we're gonna have to spend a life. Wild research. Yeah, they're not, they're going in the exile zone eventually, but they're not going in the exile zone. Well, hopefully we cast it again. I don't think they were going in the exile zone as they were, as they were reading. And I don't know why we can't undo there about it oh god well maybe these hibernations are not good oh we're super well uh, this is more like what i imagined <laughs> would happen with battle of woods versus omnath there's just so many good threats that and so much good ramp that we just are having a hard time stopping them all yeah that's i mean we're we're super all right so hibernation maybe not good i don't even know well, we're on the play for game three. That's the good news. Search your library for an instant, reveal it, put it in your hand, then discard a card at random, then shuffle. Oh, we even drew the battle of wits. Yeah, all right, so we are, yeah, we're super dead. Yeah, the, the I'm at that pretty, pretty strong, pretty, pretty strong. Oh, 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 we played the land after, okay, yeah. No, that, that makes sense. Do we? <sighs> Maybe we don't want hibernations. Maybe hibernation's not worth it. Maybe we go down the hibernations. We have so many cards. I don't know how much any of this really matters. And go back up the Urza's Rages. I don't think this is a Shadow Mage matchup. M. Cobbell. More Cowbell. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we have a new donation. Oh, another No Lander. All right, Mulligan. Oh, this deck is a little a little interesting. Well, we got the Battle of Wits. Can we find a way to cast it? We will put Compulsion to the bottom. Oh, we need blue mana so desperately. New donation from Ram Flax. Hey, Seth, really enjoyed the Snow Stompy and Narfi deck in Modern. I took the idea and added Recursive Mill. It's been doing really well. What are your thoughts? And if you had any recommendations for improvements? Ooh. Ooh, Ms. Maricorp is a, that is a spicy, that is a spicy inclusion. Definitely a good way to, to fill the graveyard for sure. That's actually a really cool idea. <laughs> Iceberg cancer eggs. Yeah, that's, that's neat. Uh, it's kind of got the, the beat down of the tree folk along with the, the mill plan from cancer eggs and uh, Ms. Maricorp. That's, that's definitely sweet. I like it. As far as suggestions, I haven't tried Necromancer in Modern. My guess is it might be more of a sideboard card, uh, if anything, just because some matchups aren't very creature heavy and in non-creature matchups, it's not that exciting. But otherwise, I mean, maybe, yeah. I mean, you could throw in some Thought Seizes or Discard Duresses or something. I uh, got yeah, Inquisitions, could move the Inquisitions to the main, but that looks, uh, that looks sweet. I like it. Cool, uh, cool update. Casey on, welcome to the fishbowl. Loving the new cam, yeah, me too. The new cam is so much better than the old one. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup to you for you. Nah, Memory Lapse has been around since, oh, I wanna say Homelands. The very earliest years of magic. It has just not been reprinted. It's not even in modern because it hasn't been reprinted in a long time outside of being put into historic. But uh, but yeah, it uh, it has been around for a minute. This mana problem might be might be an issue. Is our opponent main phasing a stomp? Okay. 
Can we draw blue mana? No. Well, this gets us to slay at least. Oh, if we just draw two blue sources in a row, I think we can win this. We got the Battle of Wits. Boy, if we had a blue source, this hand would be the nut draw. This would be the absolute dream. Is it Ice Age? I thought it was Homelands. About it. There's Crushy Crusherton. I was hoping never to see this card again, but <laughs> I guess Classic Standard could be an exception at all. Well, target you. I think we go white? Oh, uh, we got the Battle of Wits. We're going to lose because... We're going to lose because we don't have the blue mana at the moment. Or that's going to be the biggest problem. Okay. Oh, no. Another Bone Crusher. Adel is... Wow. I was just talking about how spells used to be better back in the day. I don't know that that's true of Adel. <laughs> Two mana. Choose a color. Get a Thought Seize. Only for that color. That's not very good. I guess it was the best discard option in its format, but opponent stomps our face, hits us with the Bone Crusher. They probably should just be running out this Bone Crusher. Okay. Come on, Battle of Wits Gods. Blue. Oh, what a depressing way to lose. Oh, no. <laughs> it's in our hand. We did the hard part, finding the Battle of Wits in the 244 card deck. Could not do the presumably easier part. You know what? We're actually gonna we're actually gonna kill this. <laughs> I know it's dying anyway, but we need to cycle this sleigh to draw a card. Alright, FTK is not the worst. We still desperately need mana. Yeah, we get <laughs> a little awkward to kill it when it's dying anyway, but we just we gotta draw a card. We need to we need to find this mana. Opponent hits us. What we would get for an island, please not a tap land. Okay. Well, it's not an island, but FTK does get rid of the Bone Crusher. Are we are we gonna have to Diabolic Tutor for an island? <laughs> have, uh, have you ever had to do that in Commander? It's the worst feeling. Bone Crusher haunts my dreams too. Eldorain. Um it's it's the worst feeling when you have to uh, you have to spend your demonic tutor to get a land. It just you know it's the right thing to do and you got to do it, but it just feels so bad. Escape to the wild. Okay, escapes into a ridiculous pile of broken cards but no mana. Not an island. Well, okay. We are not making this look easy just because we don't have lands. Diabolic Tutor. <laughs> We're getting blue mana one way or another. It's happening. The magic gods cannot stop us. I've used Demonic to fetch a uh, land plenty of times. Yeah, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. I think the single card I vamp tutored most in EDH is Golgari Rot Farm. Ooh, question about Golgari Rot Farm. Oh yeah, we're still not in stream mode, aren't we? Um, go Gary Rotfarb question. You're playing commander. Your opponent plays go Gary Rotfarb. You have a strip mine. Do you strip mine it just on principle because it's value? Or do you not do that because it's mean? <laughs> Was having a conversation with someone about that today. Do you strip mine the bounce land just because you can? Do we have any lands that tap for double blue mana? Doesn't look like it. Uh, so, I'll take Coastal Tower, play Coastal Tower. Not going to attack because of hasty stuff. I mean, I think the answer is yes. I The answer for me is yes. <laughs> I, I just, it's, you can't give up that value. You can't give up the value. It's like strip mining two lands. If you could strip mine two lands with a strip mine, why wouldn't you? And hitting a bounce land is about as close as it gets to being able to strip mine two lands. <laughs> I don't strip mine non-problematic lands. At the same time, I do also sometimes get punished for doing it. You, oh, if, they, if they top deck a fetch land off of this, it's so bad. We don't actually have an answer for this at the moment. We're staying alive just because our opponent's missing land drops too. Orange Rampage! Wait, 
Orana page. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, doubly so if it's Tomer. I mean, just because then you get the Mickey Mouse voice and that's, that's the best <laughs> about it. Ooh, charcoal dye, man. Well, so we can't kill this. Oh, this has gotten interesting. Um, definitely got to leave up counters. I'll play Charcoal Diamond. Oh, Omneth is scary. It's a scary good card. We really need another. Uh, man, if we just hit our lands, I think we win this. Walking away. Factor Fiction for blue. It's so risky. I feel like if we don't leave up a counter here, we're very likely to die. And we have a lot of tap lands. And we have a 233 card deck. There's not really a guarantee that we hit blue mana. We probably would, I guess. I don't know. It would be a risky line, but it would have a high payoff. Hey, what's up, Bulldog? We are playing... Oh. Oh, no. That is literally the best land our opponent could draw. Like, by a million miles. Oh, that's so brutal. We're playing standard through the ages. We're trying to win with Battle of Wits against busted, busted, busted new cards. <laughs> battle of Wits versus Eldraine, the classic battle. Wow. Our opponent's going to probably win because they drew that Fabled Passage. If they drew a normal land, it would be okay. But the Fabled Passage for double mana with Omnath. Omnath is insane. Perika, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoops here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's memory lapse. <laughs> Just like historic, please attack with your Omnath. We would like to block. Okay, opponent. Attacks with Omnath. Okay, we will block and kill with FTK. We have hope. We have hope. There is hope. There's hope in Battle of Witsville. Opponent loses their Omnath. They do have a Lotus Cobra. Passes. Diabolic Tutor. <laughs> Not again. Not again. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I really don't want to. Oh, my God. Okay. Um. Well, now I think we have to do this. We just don't have a choice. It doesn't feel good, but all right. Factor Fiction. Blue mana, please. Okay, so we're taking City of Brass no matter what. <laughs> we need the City of Brass. We'll take it no matter what the piles are. We're taking City of Brass. Really? Lands for spells? Oh my god, that's so good for a... Everything versus Hurst's Rage? Oh, please. Everything. Okay. Uh-huh. You don't want us to get the peak? Oh. Oh, okay. Yes, we... Yes, our mana screwed selves will choose the pile with three lands. <laughs> wow, that was... Better than I could have imagined that split going. Thank you, opponent. <laughs> you you are a good dude, walking dude. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm not sure opponents played with uh, with Factor Fiction very often because that was the dream. Like, in normal Factor Fiction, if your opponent's struggling to hit lands all game, you probably don't want to just give them all the lands in a pile. You want to you wanna try to minimize that, most likely. That worked out amazingly well in... Uro. Okay. And now I think there's actually a chance that we win this game. Like, we got the Battle of Wits. We got the mana. We just got to not die to, like, a Kenrith. We got to get into a position where we can play Battle of Wits and not be dead to our opponent top decking something hasty. Opponent, row to the graveyard, does not hit a land. Going to... Bone Crusher. Well, okay. We will counter the Bone Crusher. 
drop to six. Or we YOLO it. That's the other option. What do you say, chat? What are we doing here? Are we just are we just slamming battle wits and saying, kill us if you can? Or are we trying to play around stuff? Down to four. We draw probe. Ooh. Oh, interesting. One, two, three, four, five. So we can play Battle of Wits and leave up Urza's Rage. We can play Battle of Wits, kill the Lotus Cobra, and just trust. Our opponents use two Bone Crushers. You miss 100% of the Battle of Wits you don't cast. All right. I will, I will buy that logic. Can they cast Ultimatum? They have one white source. Blue, blue, cream. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, maybe we should wait. Ring Chaser. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's think about this. It would be easier to play correctly if I... <laughs> And <laughs> played this deck list more. We have 226 cards. I don't know what we can tutor up potentially. So one appealing option is to wait on Battle of Wits. Kick the probe. And leave up the counter. Can we do that? Black. Red, red. Blue. Whatever. And then we'll have white red black I think this is a correct line I think the correct line is probe with kicker so opponent discards two Chris welcome to the fishbowl and Ray Chaser welcome to the fishbowl thank you for the kind words and the reason big scoop cheer for both of you so we draw some cards we'll discard this we'll discard this Okay, opponent pitches the ultimatum. Play Sulfurous Springs. The other issue we have here is our mana base is incredibly painful. We might not have taken into account the incredible <laughs> the incredible number of pain lands in this deck. Hey, evening Marvel Cake Bit, how are you? Good to see ya. Opponent. I mean, and they have Uru in the graveyard, of course. Wow. Dead. Well, I guess we were dead either way. The biggest problem we're having is our mana base. Yeah. I mean, we need to be able to gain life with this Dromar's Charm. Yeah. Wow. Brutal. Well, I mean, game five doesn't stop us from taking one, two, three, eight, nine, ten. Oh, wow. We made we made that close. The biggest issue we found with Battle of Wits there is just the mana is so bad compared to modern decks. Like the mana from twenty years ago is ridiculously poor. Like that's what killed us. If we had modern lands, I think we win that game easily why would you join this event playing standard from last year yeah it'll be interesting to see to see how many people are like trying to play it spiky because if you get three wins you get a treasure chest and how many people are like trying to check out cool decks when we talked about what decks we were gonna play we put the omnath deck is like that was the first deck we crossed off like don't even suggest that one we're not playing it but to each their own Remake this deck with just Modern Lands being the only change. Yeah, for the event, you have to play the, the actual deck, though. You could play a deck like this in Legacy, I guess. Although, if you're going to make a Legacy version of it, there's a lot more a lot more options. <laughs> yeah, I I didn't think that through that well either. Although, looking back at it, if we played Battle of Wits, we would have been in the same position. And our opponent would have had Genesis Ultimate. Oh, okay. Well... I like this hand quite a bit. Oh no, 
it's a counter deck. Ugh, okay. Well, if we can dodge the counters, we have Battle of Wits, and we can't even ramp into it. This is like the Battle of Wits nut draw. Yes, this is all we can ask. Okay, opponent knows. Okay, so opponent, I think, is Delver, maybe? No, land, and sleight of hand. <laughs> we got some protection. We got some protection. Yeah, it's got to be Delver or Twin. I think it's probably Delver. I think Delver has both of these cards. Bonet. Definitely Delver. Rune Channer Spike is 100% Delver. Rune Channer Spike was good in the original Delver deck. Void. What does this card do? Choose a number. Destroy all artifacts and creatures with mana value equal to that number. Then target player reveals their hand and discards all non-land cards with mana value equal to that number. All right. Kind of sweet. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's a, that's a good tell. I hadn't thought about that. They have the proper... Uh, we don't have the proper basic lands. We got Ravnica basic lands. This deck is definitely pre-Ravnica era. I wish they had done the original versions of the cards. Like, I'm not sure why we have a Modern Horizons Factor Fiction instead of, like, the original version, but, eh. I wish the, a Trinity Green deck from Saga Masks was here. Yeah, what other decks would be cool inclusions? People mentioned Psychotog. Psychotog is a big one. I feel like they did a pretty good job. Uh, my only... My main feedback would be, I don't know if we need to include the more modern decks. But I guess if your goal is to have all of Standard's history, it makes sense. But personally, if I was doing it... Well, uh, you know what? Actually, this is fine. Sure. Thought Scour. But if you're trying to have all standards, history does make sense. If I was doing it, I might have left out like the, the last like two or three years and focus more on the history aspect. This Rune Channer Spike is going to gonna do some work if our opponent gets a creature. Sure. Thought Scour. Thought Scour. This deck was really good back in its era. Ooh, Helm of Erdem Geddon is a really good choice. That's, like, super classic. Well, okay. One, two, three, five. Let's see, uh, let's see how BG Stilts does with, uh, with the splitting. Would you like to give us four cards, opponent? <laughs> we will not complain again. Yeah, not a, not a great five. Hopefully we get, like, one of the card draw spells in a land would be good. Yeah, the version of Delver they have in this event is a weird one. It kind of caught me by surprise. The Delver version is not what I would consider the best Delver version. Like, this is a Delver version, a later Delver version, uh, that is playing um, Invisible Stalkers. It's playing Splashing Red for Bonfire. It's not playing Mana Leaks in the main deck. There's no... When I think of Delver, I think of Snapcaster, Restoration Angel, Blade Splicer... Um, Ponders, Mana Leagues, Delvers, like the, the early era. I think, I don't know, maybe this was a better version of it. I think of the early, the early era with Restoration Angel as being like the, the most power. It was like a modern deck. It was like a modern deck that was legal and standard. So I feel like, uh, maybe they, mm. oh, hmm. <laughs> BG, BG Stilts, I think that's a stream person. BG Stilts, did you hear me say that I was hoping for a land and a card draw spell? If so, that is a good pile. Um, huh. Well, all right. Actually, we don't even have red mana. The mana in this deck is so janky. Uh, so, what are we doing? We can't even kick either of these. This is bad. You know what? We're going to take this one. We'll take the card draw pile. Hopefully we find some man of other colors. Compulsion. One, two, three. Uh, yeah, let's just compulsion. Play compulsion, your best turn. Wait, do they not? I guess I should actually pay attention to these deck lists. We were just talking about no mana leagues. Are we safe to just... <laughs> I guess we just look at the deck list. Huh. I guess, honestly, we are safe to slam it. Okay. Well, next turn we'll slam Battle of Wits because apparently... 
<laughs> Apparently, this version of Delver does not actually play answers to it. For some reason. About it. Going to Thought Scour, sure. Well, this is fine. This just gives us another turn to uh, to get someone with with disrupt, which is pretty close to a mana tithe. Yeah, compulsion is a sweet card. Why do I never play compulsion in commander? Just like repeatable looting, and then you can sack it to draw a card too, so it cycles itself. Like that's kind of insane. About it. Oh no. How big is this? Nine power. Oh no. Do we punt this? Do we punt this game? Oh, we should have just slammed it. We should have slammed it. Rune Shanner's pot. Oh my goodness. That one's on me. Hey, what's up, uh, Maxi? How are you? We probably should have just cast it. Well, that's what we get for not actually going over i guess the first thing we should do when we get into a matchup is just look at uh the opponent's deck list do it the spiky way wow huh that's interesting uh okay huh somehow our opponent is playing around disrupt that doesn't seem especially likely. Well, we found mana of other colors. So play the land. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, this is actually kind of insane. Oh, we don't have enough. Our mana is so janky. I wanted to void and get both of them, but so I guess we just have to. Prophetic Bolt, kill the Snapcaster. Take a. Flame Tongue Kavu. Pass the... We're so close to winning this game. Pass the turn. Oh, yeah, that's right. The probe The probe would have revealed the second one. Good call. Playing around it. Definitely a good choice. Opponent passes. Well, here we go. The time has come. We play caves of Koilos. Oh, we're dead to Snapcaster. Do we have to try to play around Snapcaster? Oh, chat, what do we do? What do we do? Uh. Oh, yeah, I guess that's the other option. Our opponent might be actually reading the deck list. Like, if we stick Battle of Wits and our opponent does not have Snapcaster, we win. I think that's the only card that matters. Our opponent needs to have exactly another copy of Snapcaster. If they have it, we would be dead. If they don't have it, we win. The other option is to try to void. But that leaves us susceptible to our opponent burning us out. Like, voiding does... Like, this devil's place in the graveyard. Bonfire the dams in our opponent's deck. Magic Black TK! Welcome! Thank you for the raid! How are you doing tonight? Thank you so much. Yeah, it's Battle of Whitsford's Delver. I think we do it. You know what? Hmm. We're doing it. There's no There's no fear. There's no fear in Battle of Wits land. Battle of Wits. Go. Do you have a Snapcaster? Incinerate. Okay. No bonfires. No bonfires. Pillar of Flame to four. Land. Oh, Battle of Wits. <laughs> oh, okay. From now on, we will look at deck lists. We will look at our opponent's deck. Oh, it was just two lads. Good game, BG. Good game, BG. Um, from now on, we will we will look at our opponent's deck list before we before we uh, before we go into the match. Oh, we got there. We got there. We got there. We got there. Little risky, but we're good. <laughs> Uh, I sorry chat you had good advice but I'm glad we didn't listen because not listen sometimes you gotta not listen to advice <laughs> as much as I love all of you and as good as the advice was sometimes you just gotta you gotta slam the battle of wits if you're gonna play battle of wits you just slam the battle of wits and and hope
So I assume, all right, we can actually look at our opponent's deck list. What do they have in their sideboard? Do they have answers to this? Opponent gets to bring in two mana leaks, and that seems like the only thing that is super relevant. This might be a decent matchup for us. <laughs> Borden, well, these cards don't do anything. We have eight cards that specifically fight green decks. Circular Protection Black also does nothing against Delver. Shadow Mage Infiltrator could be okay, but Shadow Mage Infiltrator dies to Incinerate, which we just got directed to our face recently, so I feel like we should just bring in nothing. Uh, this hand feels not very good. So many of our cards say draw a card, which is sweet, but uh, yeah, let's mulligan. This is good. This is fine. We will put eight caves of Coilos to the bottom. I'm glad Wizards has gotten better at uh, making lands. <laughs> the lands back in the day, or I don't know, if you played Magic back in the day, what did you think about mana at the time compared to now? Like now, honest, we've been complaining a little bit about mana in our current standard, but compared to, <laughs> compared to this mana base, even our current standard, the lands just seem way more powerful. They're not causing us pain. We just had trial, like triomes that have for three colors. I feel like lands have gotten a lot better. Do you think magic's better when lands are more like this or more like our current lands? Out of curiosity, would it be legal to board down to 60 card deck of some kind? Sideboarding is weird. So with sideboarding, you can have less than 15 cards in your sideboard. So you could sideboard in all 15 cards and not take any out, but uh, you cannot put more cards into your sideboard. So, so we couldn't do that. We couldn't take like 150 cards out and play a 60 card deck. That would, uh, that would not be legal. Uh, all right. Island Gale. Colors used to matter. Good fixing is bad for the game. I mean, Ah, that's, that's tough. I think that's a tough one. Like, yeah, I think it's bad to some extent. But at the same time, casting your spells is sweet. So there's, oh, they got the mana leak. So there is upside to having decent mana, which is you actually get to cast your cool spells that you want to cast. I'm sure, I think it can go too far. I think it can go too far where it becomes a negative. There's probably a middle ground. Like, do we want do we want to be losing to our mana base with a man, with a deck that doesn't even really have that tough of color requirements? Probably not. But at the same time, you also don't want perfect mana all the time because then it uh, then it does become a little bit too easy just to play all the most busted cards in every deck. Yeah, we saw, I mean, the five color good stuff meta. I think Battle for Zender, uh, yeah, Battle for Zendikar standard was a pretty good example. When we had the fetch lands and the fetchable duels and it did just become a lot of four and five color piles. Now, let, uh, let's repulse. Actually, let's draw Mars Charm. I think I'd rather, wow. All right, we're gonna take a little bit of damage. Draw Mars Charm, try to kill the Delver. Opponent can mana leak, but then we can repulse it and draw a card and try to find the battle woods. What do you mean colors matter? The only colors that matter is green. Yeah, I mean, green does kind of get it all these days. Taint back sweet. Uh, well, repulse the Delver while our opponent's tapped out. So we've gone through one mana leak. We do have to watch out for Snapcaster mana leak, but one down. We just need the battle of wits. And Battle for Zendikar Standard, I homebrewed a five-color walker deck and won two FNMs. Ooh, sweet, awesome, dude. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's... <laughs> I mean, sweet that you won the FNMs. It was very easy to build five-color decks. Five-color Super Friends is fun. One of the things I like about Psychotog and other decks back then is how light on rares it was to build a good deck. Now it's really hard to be competitive outside of maybe FNM unless you have 9,000 rares mythics in your deck. That's an interesting point. I mean, I think that is... At least to some extent, I think that is true. Ooh, FTK. Actually, you probably should take Tutor. Let's take Tutor. Let's play Catacombs. Let's Innocent Blood the Delver. Pass the turn. We can Tainted Pact. We're getting close. We're getting close to the Battle of Wits when we are down to 10. Ooh. Now, this is a little painful, but... Yeah, let's let's counter that. We're getting the one life. Count the Snapcaster. 
Well, come on, Battle Wits. Yeah, it's odd. I feel like Wizards has made a conscious effort to make commons and uncommons better recently. Like, we've had some really good commons and uncommons recently. Ooh, ooh Invisible Stalker. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we've seen that. There's Some of the commons that we get today kind of blow me away. At the same time, the rares and mythics have gotten so strong that you do kind of need them sometimes to be competitive. So even though the commons are good, oh, they drew both? Wow, okay, Punisher drew both mana leagues. Well, we know there's only two in their deck. The mana leagues are down. Unfortunately, we needed that to live. <laughs> Divide our battle wits and live. Ah, good old fire design. Next week's Budget Magic's a, a fun one, Mind Stab Thrall. I'm excited for uh, for next week's deck. But it hits us to eight passes. Well, slogging through all the counters is good. Let's well, Tainted Pact. Go dig it. Uh, Swamp, new. Flame Tongue Kavu, new. Island, new. Caves of Koilos, new. Battle of Wits, yes. <laughs> okay. Can we live for two more turns? Pass the turn. About it. You gonna loot? That's fine. That's fine. Little looting's fine. Mono Green Stubby. Thank you for the kind words. And for the 50 month resub. Big Soup's here for you. Thank you. Thank you. Extra turn can be retired, but everything else can be used a fr uh everything else can use a fresh power level for sure yeah i would be i'd be down with uh, extra turn spells being retired yeah we're probably gonna go gain five unless there's something super wow cough unless there's something super scary we gotta counter pillar of flames okay to six drop to five yeah 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 Five points of life. Well, uh, gain five life. Opponent could definitely have Snapcaster Mana Lake. Oh no. Wow, they. Oh, there's only two Mana Leaks in their deck, and we got hit by so many of them. About it. <sighs> Insidious Streams, dead. Oh, this painful mana is wrecking us. <laughs> this painful mana is wrecking us. All right, well, run it back. What is my favorite standard since we are going back in uh, standards history? I think I had, hmm. Originally, Innistrad standards was, was really fun. That was that was when I really really liked. I also really liked. Uh, this is since I've been really like playing standard somewhat competitively. So that would be like uh, post original Ravnica for sure. But a little while past that, because when I started playing around original Ravnica, I was mostly playing casually. So, um, so yeah, original Innistrad was really sweet. Mm. Okay, okay, uh, and I think that that uh. That cons was really sweet. I feel like cons, cons is a standard that I feel like has aged well. I feel like at the time people would meme on Siege Rhino, but then we got to see what really broken standards were like, <laughs> and we got to see how good, the, like how good that standard was. There were constant. There was like so many different decks that were playable, like tournament worthy, winning tournament style decks. So I feel like that is a standard that, with the benefit of hindsight actually looks really good when all right there's a delver how many mana leaks do they have we have so many slow removal spells oh that's a battle of wits well let's see if we can live long enough and resolve it through all these mana leaks past the turd but i feel like it's a standard that uh they got way better Kanzo's was one of the most funds i read jeskai black abs and red we're all good fun yeah i i also really like that format and I think a lot of the complaints from the time about like siege rhinos look a little bit, a little bit silly and dated <laughs> compared to what has gone on since. 
Like it's hard to think of Siege Rhino as a as a problematic card after Omnas and Okos and just everything else we've been through. Well, we will pass the turn. Opponent, of course, got the, the Blind Delver flip, as Bl Delver is known to do. Land for our opponent, goes to combat. Well, uh, sack this for white. Try to kill the Delver. Do they gonna have the Mana Leak? Yes. Wow, these two Mana Leaks are always at the top of our opponent's deck. <laughs> okay, well, Mana of other colors, please. All right, Marble Diamond, go. How do they always have one of those two mana leaks? We know there's only two in their deck. Was Sphinx's Rev even that good? Uh, Sphinx's Rev was good in its time. It was definitely a part of one of the one of the best decks in Standard. dead well i mean on one hand this is what delver is trying to do on the other hand the fact that for some reason this build of delver is not playing main deck mana leagues and it only has two mana leagues makes this a little bit frustrating <laughs> if it was a real version of delver the good version of delver that would just had a whole bunch of mana leagues like this is exactly what made delver the best deck in its format by a pretty a pretty good margin like so vapor saying your thing snapcaster it back mana leak your thing snapcaster it back but this is just such a janky build of this is just such a janky build of delver that it's it's a little bit frustrating that we're getting mana leak constantly when we know there's only two of them and we're just oh, we can't get out of it we can't get out of it yeah, I mean, this is too fast of a clock. We got the Battle of Wits, but those... Oh, my goodness, another one. <laughs> dead. Dead, dead, dead. All right, a minute goes to combat. Hits us. Oh, so, well, the good news is we have seen a Battle of Wits win. The bad news is Battle of Wits is proving to be what we thought probably the against the odds deck of the of the pool like as far as actually consistently winning definitely pretty bad i didn't play with siege rhino standard i know a lot of people i know a lot of people complained about it but in a world of draining life isn't cat oven superior uh i mean calvin i think like siege rhino is just not not really a <laughs> that strong of a card compared to should we just call it with Battle of Wits or do you want to play the last round? What do you think? That's actually a good question. So we're, we can't win prizes. Would you prefer to do one more round with Battle of Wits or should we get onto the, should we get onto the, the next deck so we have a chance to see more decks? Hey, what's up, Domer? How are you? Need some more Cauldra? <laughs> I don't think there's a Cauldra, a Cauldra deck in this pool. New deck, next round. All right. All right, I think that's I think that's fine. We gotta we got a battle of wits win. We got a battle of wits win, and we want to see multiple of these cool old decks. Why we have a chance during the stream? So what's next, chat? What's next? What's next? What's next? So we did battle of wits. We're not playing Omnath. That's the that's the tryhard deck. We're not playing um. We're not playing vehicles. What do you want to see? M old school model black control. Old school model black control is kind of interesting. Sly, Callblade, Jund. Everyone wants to see something different. Lots of Callblade votes. Mono Black and Callblade seem to be. Yeah, you can make a quick poll, uh, poll if you want, Thanos. Would you say Omnath Tech is the strongest? Uh, Omnath Tech has the strongest individual cards. Like, this is a deck that has the most just like play a broken thing, win the game cards. I think. There could be an argument that something like Affinity might be a stronger deck. Um, that's one that I... We haven't played yet. We haven't played against yet. But I imagine Affinity is really, really good. Uh, we saw Delver be very, very good, even though I think it's not a great build of Delver. Hmm, I don't know what else is in the competition for just, like, best deck, but... All right, so there's a poll up. Get your vote in. Right now, Callblade and Affinity are winning Cobblade holding on tied with affinity 
Get in your votes on what deck to play next. There's only a few seconds left in the poll. Affinity taking the lead. Interesting. So Delver and Sly, even though they have their fans, are the least popular. I mean, we already got to see our opponent play Delver too, so that makes sense. Well, it looks like it's going to be Affinity. Affinity taking home the win. Well, okay. Okay, okay. Affinity time. So Affinity, we'll see. My guess is this is one of the most powerful decks in the entire in the entire pool, but uh, but we're gonna find out right now since Affinity, forty two percent of the bowl. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so Affinity. This is Innistrad standard, and this is not the absolute most busted version of. Yeah, we couldn't put all the decks. Hey, thank you, Thanos. I see you learned how to see pulls. Yeah, they they show up now. They show up now sometimes at the top. Uh, so. This is not the most busted version of Affinity. The most busted version of Affinity also had Skull Clamp. Wizards banned the Skull Clamp. They later banned a bunch more stuff, mostly the Artifact Lands. Uh, but this is a pretty powerful version of the deck. So this deck, what do we want to do? Well, almost all of our lands are Artifacts, which is kind of insane. All of those lands are growing our Cranial Plating. They're turning on our Frog Mites. They're turning on our Mirror Enforcers to make them cheaper. We can sacrifice them to Arcbound Ravager. We can sacrifice them to a Tagata to make them absolutely massive and then the big kind of aristocrat payoff is disciple of the vault disciple of the vault when our artifact goes to the graveyard we drain our opponent so what we want to do is play artifact lands play some ravagers get in some hits with our cranial planning and then just sacrifice everything with the disciple of the vault or two on the battlefield to win the game and let's see i would imagine this is one of the stronger decks but we're gonna see didn't this receive six standard bands even worse than omnath sort of yes technically yes however Ever. um that is counting i believe each artifact land separately i don't know if it's fair to consider banning like all the artifact lands the same as banning like omnath and then oko and then once upon a time or whatever i don't know it feels different to me because they're lands uh but technically yes this deck i think is a deck that has in an absolute sense the highest number of cards banned out of it Clamp the artifact lands, disable the vault. Yeah, that sounds correct. What were the other cards banned? Wait, isn't that seven? What are the what are the other ones that were banned? If there were ten, am I missing some? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I actually think this is kind of fine. Artifact, artifact. Ugh. Actually, do we mulligan this? Only one land. Yeah, the mistake was the same for all the artifact lands, I think. <laughs> Why does it say Seat of the Side Nod isn't a spell? <laughs> Do you see that reminder? I've never, I've never seen that reminder before. This land is not a spell? Was that something people were struggling with? Were <laughs> Was that was that an issue? Was that an issue back in the day? Uh, well, okay. This will keep. We'll put Frogmite, I guess, to the bottom. Well, we'll see. So, let's start dumping our hand. Blink Moth Nexus, Ether Vial, yeah. Was that actually printed on the paper cards at the time? I don't remember that being printed. Maybe I just didn't actually pay attention to it. I don't remember that being printed on the card. That's kind of hilarious. All right, either about take it up. Oh, that's our, oh, our opponent's also affinity. Well, that's a Ravager, so we will play Ravager. Pass the turn. All right, Affinity Mirror. Who wins the Affinity Mirror about it? Also Ravager. Okay. Well, put a Disciple of the Vault into play. So we know our opponent's playing the same deck as ours. Like, same exact deck. Uh, Vile, take it up. Great Furtis. Dramatic Sphere. Go to combat. Fire Blink Moth Nexus. Hedge ya. 
Well, we're winning the race at the moment, but our opponent has a lot of cards in hand, and we do not. Opponent takes it. Down to 18 past the turn. Oh, Saliva! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. About it. Arcbound Worker. Frogmite. And. Passes. Well, Ether Vial. Come on, card draw, pay off something. Cranial plating would be nice. Vile, say it on two. Can we win this game? Another furnace. All right, let's think about this now. One, two, three, four. Uh, five. Close, but not quite, quite close enough for winning. Oh, Blink Moth. Great Furnace. Go to combat. Attack, attack, attack. Well, yeah, if they choose not to block a Taga Taga, I think we just kill him, kill him. Yeah, let's not attack with Ravager. Attack, attack. Opponent blocks. Gets a counter. Oh, that's right. Our Disciple triggers on their stuff, too. Oh, that's actually good news. Having the Disciple seems huge in this matchup. Well, drain ya. Yes, please. Opponent goes to 16 past the turn. Wait, we actually had it if we attacked with our Avager? One, two, three, four, five. So we get five, six. All right, yeah, opponent's got the card draw. Opponent's got the long game. We do need to find a way to close this out. See to the Sinon. We've kind of flooded a bit. Yeah, I think we were just short, but maybe I'm maybe I'm miscounting. This is standard throughout the ages. It's a new special event on Magic Online with some of the best decks from the history of standard. All right, opponent. Sax gets drained. A quick reminder tonight that our oh, opponent has Disciple, that our sponsor tonight is Card Kingdom. If you need some magic cards, you can get them from cardkingdom.com. About it. Passes. Vile staying on two. Hmm. Well, blue mana. Drain you. Get drained. Thought cast. Oh boy, we are drawing so poorly. These are like the worst cards we could draw. Blank Moth. Blank Moth. If we could play the second Disciple, we would win. All right, let's think about this. Affinity takes so much math. Uh, you keep saying Atagatag, -tag, but Atagatag -tag is from Odyssey. You're playing a tag, which is an antiquity, is different card altogether. <sighs> but Atagatag is a good one. And we do have two of them. So we literally have Atagatag. -tag. Iguanas, same. A tag, a tag. Tag, a tag. <laughs> uh, but you are, you are technically correct. The best kind. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> and we can pump with this. This is lethal, right? So we can pump the blink moth. Oh, no, we, hmm. One? We have to turn this on, though. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that lethal? <laughs> 
If they block, they die. If they don't block, they die. Don't we have to put all the counters on the Ravager? I'm so confused. So are we turning on the Blink Moth or are we pumping? Prof and Arch Burglar Lord, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big stupid cheer for you. I keep coming up one damage short if we do that. Like, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six damage. This becomes seven power. Six, seven, 13. Am I missing something? Or is that not 13? One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> what am I what am I missing? How how are we getting 14 points of damage? Yeah, but we don't get a counter from sacking the Ravager, right? Because it's gonna be sacked. So we're gonna get six total counters. I feel like we hit for 13, but maybe I'm missing something. Okay, I mean, you want to go for it? I'm, I, I'm like, convinced this is 13 damage, but I will go for it if y'all want to go for it. Well, the problem is we can't pump the Ink Moth and also turn it on to sack it. So we either turn it into an artifact to sack it and get a damage with Disciple, or we pump it and can't sack it. We can't do both. Oh, sacking the Blink Moth after. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I think that works. Okay, yeah, I think that was the one point of damage I was missing. Atag Atag sack the Blink Moth after. All right, that looks like lethal to me. I'm on, I'm on board. I'm fully on board. All right, so we can turn on the Blink Moth. Tab the Blink Moth. Turn it on. We can put a Tagi Tag into play, because why not? We can sacrifice Ether Vial. Drain you. Yeah, that's that's what I was missing. Good good call, chat. Drain you. Sacrifice the land. Drain you. Sacrifice the land. Well, hopefully this works out. If this doesn't work out, I'm going to be so sad. Drain you. Sacrifice the land. Drain you. These decks, it's like hardened scales in modern. They always, they always deal way more damage than you think. These are decks that if you decide to pick up a deck like Affinity or Hardened Scales, practice them a lot because the lines are not always that intuitive. Go to combat, attack. About it. Oh, what a ridiculous mathy matchup. Yeah, the, the point of damage that we were perhaps missing was hopefully this works. So Sack Ravager counters on the Blink Moth, drain you. What I was missing is post-combat. We had 13 points of damage in, in combat, but then the 14th point comes in our second main phase after damage. We hit our opponent for seven. What I was missing was the sacking of the Blink Moth to the to the Tagatog -tag to get the last... Whoa, so much math. So much math. <laughs> sack the whole board sack them all sack them all and that's how affinity works wow good uh, good call chat good good call working through that affinity tur uh, affinity turn <laughs> hey Seth, i've been playing the junk uh massacre deck and it seems terrible uh i haven't played the junk massacre deck that was one of phil's decks um 
I think so. My my understanding of Phil's content for the most part is, um, yeah, that is probably why it's a uh, it's Frank Carson's deck. I think that Phil's decks are kind of kind of against the odds. Like, I think Phil is trying to show off a really cool thing. I I'd have to ask Phil exactly like what the record is or whatever, but I think the idea is like here's a really cool thing that I can do some percentage of the time. I don't think it's necessarily a gonna always be like a super competitive like you know rank up to mythic uh style of matchup i don't want to speak for uh for phil because it's his content but that is my impression of of phil's content so so yeah i, I haven't played it myself i think the combos are really sweet when it goes off but i have no idea like how how competitive it is as far as actually like uh ranking up or whatever yes yeah, is this is old we're playing standard throughout the ages an event that has tap target <laughs> tap target artifact that's probably actually good electrostatic bolt seems good pyroclasm relic barriers i have no idea how to sideboard for this matchup <laughs> is ether vial actually good we can probably get on ether vial right that's just a cheap artifact what else can we cut Mirror Retrievers? I don't know. Anyone have any sideboard suggestions? Yeah, so I assume there's some bad matchups. Are all these decks meant to be about equal in power? Uh, I would say no. I think they're designed to be the best decks throughout the history of Magic. Yeah, I guess Vile to put Disciple into play, but how do we sideboard in the stuff that we want? Like, I, we gotta have... Maybe we don't bring in... Do we not bring in the Relic Barriers? Maybe Relic Barrier is not worth it. Oh no, we are so running out of time. Uh, okay, that optimal sideboarding achieved. Um, I love new magic. I wish the art could be hand-drawn like these. Yeah, there is a, a beauty to old magic cards. I mean, there's a lot of awesome art in new magic cards, too. But I don't know. There's some classic... Oops. There's some classic feel to, to older cards, at least for me. So I think I, I know what you're saying. But I think... I mean, we have a lot of amazing art today, too. Hey, what's up, Escapolo? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Disciple plus two mirror retrievers and a sack outlet. Infinite drain. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we could try to go combo -y. Opponent's got a retriever. And a frogmite. And hits us. Okay. Oh. I don't know about only drawing cranial platings. That might not be... That might not be the optimal way to win the mirror. <laughs> I get what you're saying. I'm pretty sure all magic art is drawn by hand. Uh, I think artists work in different ways. I don't actually have a strong... Some people like don't like digital art, I don't think. But I actually don't really have a strong preference about digital versus hand-drawn. Like, that's not something that matters a whole lot to me. But I uh, some of the old stuff, it's just janky looking. Like, it's, it's weird and abstract. And we got away from that for a while. We got away from, like, the weirder art that we used to get in the old days. And got a lot of more... I don't want to say cookie cutter looking, but a lot of art started to look kind of the same. But I feel like with secret layers and some of the special printings and artists like Seb McKinnon and some other ones as well, that we've started to get back to, you know, a more, a more unique style of art, I think, in Magic. Ooh, Relic Barrier. Yeah, that was a good time for the Seed of the Synod. We are going to need to get this Blink Moth down at some point. Well, all right. Relic Barrier. Stop the beats. Pass the turn. Cranial platings for literal days. No attacks. Well, this is like affinity control mirror at the moment. Yeah, Seth McKinnon has uh, a more unique style though. That's what I was that's what I was gonna get. I don't really have a I don't really care if someone how someone does their art. Like that doesn't make a difference to me. I think it's silly that uh, like personally, 
I think it's a uh, a little weird to be super critical of someone like painted something uh, on a tablet or painted something on a piece of paper. Like I don't really fully understand what the difference is. Uh, I'm not an art critic by any stretch, but to me that doesn't really matter. I just like the the more uniqueness uh, that Seb presents that I think was missing from from magic art a little bit for a few years. But I think we're heading back in a direction with more unique art. You know, get on the blink moth. Play a worker. Play a cranial plating. Equip the cranial plating. Oh, this is gonna be close. I mean, we got the platings. Maybe we can get in with these blink uh, these blink moths for lethal. It's gonna depend on how aggressive our opponent is. Opponent thought cats. They find the blue mana. They start drawing cards. The race is on. The difference is partially that digital art can always be perfect art, but traditional requires forethought. That's something. I, like I said, I'm not an art critic, so that's something I hadn't really considered. But I think that that makes sense. That you can always just keep fixing and changing something digitally and it's harder to do that in paper that that makes sense i can see that um for me like i'm not really an art critic so it's just kind of like i don't know what looks good to me <laughs> about it it's us sure can we deal 20 damage this turn great furnace Blank Moth. Equip. Are we one short? Oh my god. Oh, we're not one short. Because we can tag with the Arcbound Worker. If they block, it dies. And Disciple gets in the one. And we are the Affinity, affinity Champions. <laughs> well, that went, we took down the Affinity Mirror. That's pretty good. How are we feeling about the World Champions? That is a good question. Are you watching Worlds tomorrow? I, I'm excited-ish. I'm excited to, I'm excited to have Worlds. We haven't had a big pro-level tournament in too long, in my opinion. So, I'm excited there that is happening. The meta, meh. Battle of Wits was actually the very first deck we played tonight. Yeah, this is, this is the second one by Popular Demand. Chromatic Sphere. Go. About it. So, what do you think is going to get banned after Worlds? Yeah, the meta is the the meta is what concerns me the most. I would say, I'll play in the land, play the Arcbound Worker, play the Frogmite, play the Thoughtcast. Oh, two lands. That's well, that's not great. We need some payoffs. This oh boy, lots of people seem to pick the <laughs> seem to pick the. <laughs> Omnath deck. Okay, Confounding Conundrum. Well, can we beat the Omnath deck? We are on the play one, two, three. We're gonna get down to Mirror Enforcer. Frogmite. <laughs> Dark Steel Citadel. Mirror Enforcer. Sack this. See if we can draw some action. Thought cast is not bad. That's a rap. Actually, hmm. Ravager. Hitch. <laughs> See, Affinity is a affinity has got got some power it's got some speed opponent down to 17 who about it fable passage passing are we good enough are we good enough to beat it square wave falls with the gift step to aquanis welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big super for you thank you thank you thank you ether vial c to the synod go to combat attack you how much can we deal? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right. Not lethal. About it. Okay. Sack the ether vial. Sack the dark steel citadel. Keep our Ravager alive. Hit ya. A Tagatog. Pass the dirt. If we had played a Tagatog, we might have had lethal. But if, yeah. 
If we played a Tiger Tiger, we could add lethal that turn potentially. Ravager offers more resilience over the long game, but a Tiger Tiger does offer more burst damage. Hey, what's up, Daniel? How are you? Good to see ya. How uh, how are things in Brazil? I would be surprised if we had bannings before an opponent. <laughs> we thought Affinity might be one of the better decks, and that went well. Um, I would be surprised if we got bannings before Crimson Vow. If anything, it would probably be Elrond's Epiphany. I feel like that's the card that people complain about the most, and probably rightly so. Huh. I mean, I think we're just racing. Like, Pyroclasm doesn't do much. Relic Barrier doesn't do anything. We have this very, very mirrored in standard sideboard, where it's all about, like, fighting different artifact decks. Not much for fighting Omnaz. Hey, Seth in chat. Is it me, or I prefer seeing content on Moto over Arena? It feels more magic on a table to me. Uh, I don't know if you can understand the feeling, too. Togoto, well, I like I like uh, magic online as well, Togoto. Like, personally, personally, I enjoy magic online, although it isn't as flashy, for sure. So I understand why some people don't like it, but personally, I enjoy magic online. And I enjoy that it has just more formats as a big deal for me. Uh, so, Dark Seal Citadel. Arcbound Worker. Yo. I think that... I think that there's a small chance Epiphany could get banned. Like, I'm not calling for bans. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about what could or couldn't happen. Um... I think the most likely outcome is nothing changes until after Crimson Vow, because we're like a month away from a new set release. I think if we go to Worlds, and Worlds is... Oh, and Worlds is completely dominated by... A Spike Field Hazard was really good. And Worlds is just owned by, by the Epiphany decks. Good God. All right, so opponent's got all the removal on the sideboard. I could see an argument for Epiphany getting hit earlier. But I think, I don't know, from what people have been saying on social media, some of the people playing the decks, apparently the, the Grixis deck is supposed to be pretty busted. So if we go to, if it ends up being that Grixis Lear is just like far and away, you know, the best deck in the format by a million miles... Maybe that's something that could force Wizard's hand, but I think the most likely outcome is is no changes and see what Crimson Vow brings. I mean, I've still really been enjoying Standard. That's the thing. Like, by the numbers, Standard is not good. At least Tournament Standard is not good. Uh, or not diverse. I don't want to say not good. I, I, that's probably the wrong way to say it. Not diverse. Tournament Standard has not been diverse, but I've really been enjoying playing the format. So there's this weird, a little bit of a conundrum there, I think. Now, Link Moth Nexus. Um, one, two. Cranial Plating. Hmm. Mirror Enforcer. I guess we should have played Vile. Hmm. Yeah, we probably should have played Vile Mirror Enforcer, actually. That would have gotten another artifact on the battlefield. And, like, not a huge deal, but slight, slight misplay. Worlds doesn't need to be owned by an Epiphany deck. It needs to be banned. Even Azuri Sagar was using Epiphany. Yeah, that's... <laughs> that is a little bit scary when you see Azuri Sagar decks also being Epiphany decks. Like, ooh, that's... Uh, probably not. Probably not great. Like, if... A, oh, man, so many thought casts is pretty excellent. Ooh, that's a Ravager. That is a Ravager. Okay, so. Uh, C to the Psy mod. Aether Vial. Nexus. Plating. Go to combat. Attack you for a smidge. All right. 
A violent Ravager. Zag the Plate Egg. <laughs> Pony has had every answer, every answer imaginable. They have had them all. They have had so many removal spells. If we take this down, then I'm going to just uh, start to assume this is a good matchup. Yeah, Cranial Plating is an insane card in this deck. <laughs> it's so good. Opponent, escape to the wilds. Is our opponent dead this turn? That's a real question. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we're going to have to survive a Genesis ultimatum by the looks. Oh, opponents had one, two, three, four removal spells. Four. Oh, we're just short. Come on, cranial plating. Cranial plating would, would do it. Cranial plating would do it. About it. Thinking. Passing. Plating off the top. Opponent done with the removal finally. I mean, if they get to cast the... All right. Sack the Frogmite. Come on, cranial plating. Also, Disciple of the Vault. Disciple of the Vault would also definitely do it. That would be game. Either one. Either one. Let's get this. Let's get this win before the Genesis Ultimatum comes. Take it up. Plating. That should do it, I think. Plating. Blank Moth Nexus. Equip the plating. Oh, it doesn't. This, this isn't going to do it, is it? Pona said GG. We're going to GG him back, but I don't think we win. 12, 13. That doesn't do it, does it? Are we one short? <laughs> we are. We're exactly one artifact short. Wow. Okay. Well, so much we needed that we needed that frog might. That one point of damage our opponent took off from the frog might. I mean, can they win next turn? I don't know. They get to cast Genesis Ultimatum. If they have a blue source. And that is a, a very, very scary card. I'm asking life is scary. Like we're probably still okay, but we didn't get to win immediately. Well, it depends on what they hit. Like Omnath gain four. Ooh. Okay. Well, it's gonna come down to the Genesis uh, Genesis ultimatum. Spin it to win it. Spin it to win it. I don't think they can kill us from twenty. Opponent. What do you find? <laughs> Five cards. Omnath Felidary Retreat lands. Well, hopefully we're we're still fine. So opponent draws cards, does broken Omnath stuff. Can block the Ravager. I think the instant speed equip of plating should should be able to do it. Yeah, we're playing old school standard. Yeah, being able to equip an instant speed. Well, I mean, I guess this... I mean, I guess also just dumping Ravager's counters is going to do it. Opponent. Well, opponent fought the good fight, for sure. Well, keep him the same. Mirror Enforcer might as well. Blank Moth. Pump it. Sack it. Sack it. Sack it. Sack it. Sack it. Turn it on. Sack it. <laughs> Sack it. Sack it. Sack it. 
And uh, the reverse flawless victory. <laughs> Ooh, affinity style. And, uh, well, didn't get him last turn, but affinity still gets there. <laughs> hey, what's up, Otto Wakes? How are you today? Whew. All right. Well, this deck feels... We thought this deck was going to be good, and it's felt good so far. Battle Wits was fun, and it was cool to see all the cards, but as far as being competitive against, like, Omnas... Not really. <laughs> Not so much. But, I mean, it is Battle of Wind, so... Also, this is such a cool event. I don't know why they don't do this on Arena. Doesn't it seem like they could do this on Arena? They put random cards on Arena. It seems like it'd be really easy for them to just add more random special cards to Arena. And... And do an event like this on Arena, too. Just, I mean, I don't, it doesn't matter to me because I like playing Moto, but I know a lot of people only play Arena, and it would be really cool if more newer players who only play Arena, have never played Magic Online, would be able to experience some of these decks because, oh, they're so, they're so sweet, they're so sweet. Could you imagine? <laughs> yeah, Battle of Wits would be, that would be tough on, that would be tough on Arena, that would be tough. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's, that is probably the answer, Shivam. Like, it probably really, truly is. Like, we need people to play Moto, too. And it worked, like I said, it works fine for me because I like playing Moto. In many ways, I actually prefer Moto to Arena. Uh, so, for me personally, it's fine. But it would be cool if more new players could, could just experience things like this. Like, if old school Affinity or Sly or, ooh, Jund. Or Jund. Hmm. I don't think this is a matchup that has ever, ever played out before. Standard Jun versus Standard Affinity. They're going to have a lot of removal. Interesting. I don't know how this goes. Well, that's not ideal. They are going to have a lot of removal. That is kind of what Jun does. Now, see to the Synod. Uh, yeah, that's Cranial Plating. Pass the turn. Lightning Bolt is on Arena, but not Historic Playable. Yeah, it exists because of Strixhaven Mystical Archives, but it is not legal outside of, I guess, Brawl? They do this on Arena or Dead. I think they said they stopped, but they had events with pre-made decks, so I think Standard only. Yeah, I mean, they have done some events like this on Arena. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Hmm. Um, huh. How do we not die? Uh, we will discard one, two, three. So we mirror retriever frogmite. Discard the land. And I guess disciple? I'll play mirror retriever. Play frogmite. That's the turn. Please, no more blightnings. We really need this podcast to go off. Yeah, it is a modern matchup, although the decks are very different. Especially Jun. Jun is a lot different than it was in modern. Ooh, okay. Sure. Well, let's thought cast, draw some cards. Blank Moth Nexus. A Tog a Tog. Hit ya. Down to 16. Go. Yeah. How uh, how has Brawl been on Arena? I haven't played much Brawl in a while. Putrid Leech, classic. And more removal. Double Putrid Leech. All right. Well, that's a Ravager, though. Uh, so. All right, Ravager. This costs one, so fire up Blank Moth. Mirror Enforcer. Go to combat. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Uh, do we want to have to sack things to a Togatog, though, is a question. Like, if they don't block a Togatog, they die. But if they do block a Togatog, we have to... We have to sacrifice two things. 
Have you seen the leak of Legend of Granola? What's uh, what's Legend of Granola? <laughs> Is that a magic card? Oh, is it, is it a World of Warcraft thing? I haven't. I'm not. I'm actually not sure what uh what it is. <laughs> I got. I gotta say, finally getting into live stream. Keep making the great content. Keep uh, helps me get through the workday watching the replays. Well, this sauerkraut. Thank you for the kind words. I gotta say. One of my favorite, one of my favorite uh, parts of having Phil on Commander Clash this season, it reminds me of the uh, <laughs> gurgle, uh, gurgle in these nuts joke. So, so one of the best parts about having Phil on Commander Clash is Phil's commitment to his deck. Many, I don't know if you've noticed this. If you watch Commander Clash, pay attention to what Phil wears. He doesn't make a big deal about it, but. Phil will often wear clothing that matches the theme of his deck. For example, <laughs> for example, uh, Helicrow for the 31st month. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big subscription for you. So Phil's playing a squirrel deck. He built squirrel. He built a squirrel deck. Phil shows up wearing a, a D's nuts, <laughs> a D's nuts shirt. He, uh, he, he has done that several times. If, if you go back to other episodes, he's done that several times through Commander Clash episodes where the shirt he'll wear, the clothes he'll wear, will, uh, will match up with, <laughs> will match up with the theme of his deck, which is absolutely hilarious. I, the commitment's just so good. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. Um, all right, we're going to attack, see what our opponent does. Wow, double blocks. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Was not actually expecting the double block. This might mean we just do nothing. Oh, it's so awkward. Ugh. The puppy was on stream earlier for a minute. He is he's passed out again at the moment. Yeah, that maybe we shouldn't attack with the target dog. Maybe that was too greedy. I guess we should have assumed the double block. Hmm. Yeah. Sprouting pharynx. About it. Passes. Well, we will ravager. Sack mirror retriever. Mirror retriever. Get back cranial plating. Get a counter. Play the plating. Fire up the blink moth. Play the blink moth. Equip the plating. Well, maybe we don't even need the. Maybe we don't even need the atog. Atog. <laughs> I might be doing it a little bit now to to mess with you. <laughs> Put it down to six. <laughs> Yeah, he he does sleep a lot. He he has huge bursts of energy when he gets up, and he's uh very rambunctious. And then he will pass out anywhere. He he's so funny. He'll pass out. He'll pass out, and then he will wake up and like stumble half asleep to his food bowl. He loves to eat. Uh, puppy loves to eat. He'll stumble half asleep to his food bowl, and and uh. And eat his food and then just pass out again, like, next to his food bowl. <laughs> uh, we will equip to the Blink Moth. Go to combat. Attack you. Do you have more removal, Junt? Eh? Death? Death, please? Has he woke himself up from snoring yet? <laughs> I He snores pretty loud. I haven't noticed him wake himself up from snoring, but uh, I've definitely heard him snoring pretty loudly. Huh. 
Huh. Wait, this just doesn't matter, right? All right, sack this. Turn on this. Actually, I don't know if we want to sack that. Sack this. Sack this. Bit blast. <laughs> wow. Okay. Hits a terminate. Well, that is unfortunate. <laughs> wow. What are the chances? About it, Master of the Wild Hunt. And Bazes. Well, we still get to kill him, I think. There's no fatal push. Nothing has reach. Go to combat. Is there a lightning bolt? There's not lightning. We should have looked at the oh, there's burst lightning. Uh we got to go for it, right? We cannot go for it. We have to we have to go for it. Yeah, I guess we should have let the cascade resolve. I guess that makes sense. I mean, this is a game. If this doesn't work, we're dying. We're going all in. We're sending the max message to our opponent for killing our stuff here. Yes. If their last card is burst lightning, we are literally going to cry. Oh, oh, they pump faked it. They even pump faked it. Yeah, it would have I think it would have been better to let the let the cascade resolve. <laughs> oh boot it. Yeah, I think I think you're right, Aquanus. You do know you're a Tiger Togs. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't I can't resist. I can't resist. Yeah, <laughs> It actually scares you when your opponent dabs. Cause all right, let's we should we made the promise we were gonna look at deck lists and we didn't actually look at deck lists. That was that was something we were supposed to be doing is looking at deck lists. Let's uh let's find Jund. So Jund, Malzorn Paltz, Rune Blaster, Jund Charm. Jund Charm uh, could get us as a pyro class from Duress, Thought Hemorrhage, Great Sable Sage, the answer to fairies. Um Okay. Oh, there's only one burst lightning. We wouldn't have been a... F oh, there's four lightning bolts, though. Hmm. Okay. I mean, it's a ton of removal. And there's going to be a ton more removal. And that's that's basically it. That's a lot of removal. And I think we run it back. And we do what Affinity does. And we attack and we attack and we attack and we sack our stuff and we hope for the best. They really need to print a tag 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 <laughs> So you can attack a tag tag to pump your... Uh, <laughs> to pump your tag 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 Actually, really, though, don't you think they should make more Atogs? I feel like Atog is a... There's a bunch of them. There's, like, Oratog, Psychotog, other ones that are less well-known and important but still exist. Wouldn't it be sweet to see more Atogs? Like, I actually... I know I've been saying Atog, Atog rather than Atog, but I actually like Atog, Atog as a commander where you can... It's a five-color commander that lets you sack a a tog uh to to pump it um i would love to actually be able to build an a tog a tog a tog commander deck rather than just play it as a as kind of a janky five color commander in decks that don't actually care about its creature type you know let's play the a tog only one of them but i feel like we're we're due i feel like we're due for more uh for more atogs chronotog's another sweet one Nothing like skipping your turn for value. Pharynx. Sure. Well, take up the vial. Yep, yep, yep. Hmm. Spear, eh? Uh, well, play Chromatic Sphere. Play Frogmite. 
play Ravager. Can we get enough artifacts to one shot in with two Atogs? Just like going on the unblocked one. Ooh, Atog Baron Glory sounds fun. All right, Blood Raid into Maelstrom Pulse. Uh, okay. Hmm. Actually, all right, now we gotta do math. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not lethal. Seven times two, 14, 15 damage. All right, let's Ether Vial in a tog. Sacrifice Ether Vial. Sacrifice Ravager. This lets our frog might get big enough to keep attacking. Hey, Zesu! Welcome, good to see ya. Hello from the US. All right, so, all right, up to four power. Fizzle it. Pony gets a blood braid. And we could use some card draw. Thought cast would be good. Oh, hmm. <laughs> hmm, ask and you shall receive. Thought cast. Oh, so we get the thought cast. Crack this for black. Disciple of the Vault. Dramatic Sphere. Go to combat. Now do we win? If we attack, okay, they block, they block. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six damage. Thir uh, are we one short again? Hey, I'm doing well, Winter Wolf. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Wait. Okay. So opponent blocks here. They block here. We have to sack and sack. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I don't think it's lethal, but it's a good turn. Opponent blocks. Opponent blocks. We sack chromatic sphere. To grow a tog. Drain you. We sack Dark Steel Citadel. Grow a Tog Drain you. Opponent gets some one once, goes to 14. This might be the best tag we played so far. Opponent. I mean, now we do have a Tog a Tog. <laughs> I love how Omnath is a deck when it was only legal in physical form for a couple weeks. Yeah, that might have been a that might have been a mistake. Alright, there goes our Ravager. About it. Passes. Well, cranial plating. Fire up Blink Moth. Go to combat. Attack, 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 attack. One, two, three, four, five, six. Attack with everything. I mean, I guess this is what you do with this deck, is just keep attacking. Ooh, a Tog Tog with Arcane Adaptation and Massive Wind Nexus does sound like a fun commander deck. That sounds like the kind of commander deck I would really enjoy playing. Thankfully, there's no Oko deck. All right, opponent with a big block. How aggressively do we sack? Now, let's sack A land. Stuff dies. Opponent. Board clear. Pass the turn. We have sacked a lot of our stuff. About it passes. Well, fire up the Nexus. Equip. Go to combat. Attack you. See what our opponent does. Hopefully nothing. Cracks of Verdant Catacombs down to 12. 
Bit blast? Are we getting bit blasted? All right. Bit blast on. Well, let's see what they spin into. This time we will let the guest gate resolve first. Putrid leech. I mean, this does keep our opponent alive again. Wow. Bit Blast is insane. Bit Blast is keeping our opponent alive. This is standard through the ages, a special event on Magic Online. So opponent pumps. Well, we will sack, kill it. I mean, they could run out of removal someday. Down to six. We have sacked so much of our board. <laughs> Oh, if our opponent can deal with our stuff, we're in trouble because we've just sacked. Look at all the resources we've sacked. Oh, done. We got there. Wow. So, we said going into it, we thought Affinity might be the best deck. And Affinity backed that up by playing against Omnath, by playing against Jund, some of the other really good decks in this, and went not only undefeated, but it didn't even drop a game. 2-0, 2-0, 2-0 all the way through. That means we get a treasure chest, and we get a bunch of play points. Let's crack the treasure chest, and then we gotta decide. One more one more deck. What is what is gonna be our next deck? Any, any thoughts? What do you wanna see, chat? All right, treasure chest one of one. Def <laughs> Define deflection. Not especially powerful. Uh, yeah, I mean, kind of a, a fun card that you can throw the damage back at your opponent, but there's there's better ways of doing that than Divine Deflection. So, what are what are we doing for our last deck? Hey, what's up, Irish Burglar? Like, good to see you. How are you? So here are here are the options. So we already did Battle with, so we're not going to uh, not going to do Battle Wits again. Uh, okay, so Omnath we're not doing Goblins. Eh, there is no Siege Rhino, unfortunately. Goblins, we've played a lot of Goblins decks before. We already did Battle with Splinter Twin. If that's something that interests you, I'm down, but eh. Five Color Control is kind of appealing. Mono Black Control, I don't know if it's good, but it's kind of appealing. Um, we did Affinity. Madness would be interesting as far as like an old, an old, interesting style deck. Madness would kind of be fun. Valica Ramp would be kind of cool. Fairies, if you really want to see fairies, I'll do fairies. But fairies, I'm kind of like middling on because we played a lot of fairies before. Vehicles. Uh, vehicles is an option. Callblade is an option. The oldest deck, Sly, is an option. We haven't really... Well, I guess Affinity is kind of aggressive. I was going to say we haven't really played aggro, but... Yeah, I mean, Omnath Ramp, I think, is pretty busted. Although, I'm just not really... It doesn't appeal to me because it was just in standard and bad. Mono Black Control is your vote. Mono Black, Mono Black, Five Color... Valica or Callblade, Control, Sly. I think there's a there's a poll up. Although, uh, all right. Should we, hang on. How can I, let me see this poll. Actually, can we, let's do one more poll based on, on the feedback. Can you do one more, Tanos? So let's do a poll. The ones I'm hearing most are five color control, mono black control, um, Valica, Madness, and eh, I guess whatever, whatever for the for the last option. But let's do one more poll. Yeah, maybe. I think let's let this poll just go and just do one more. So Callblade won this one. So let's add Callblade to the next poll and let's do a poll that's. Call blade, uh, mono black control, five color control, Valakut, and madness. Let's try. Let's just try that. Let's try that. One more. So call blade, mono black, five color, uh, mono black control, five color control, madness, and Valakut. And that'll be our that'll be our final poll, and that'll be the deck that we play. So get your get your votes in. The poll is up. This is the official one. Callblade, Mono Black Control, Five Color Control, Valica Madness. What deck are we playing? What classic deck? What classic standard deck is up next? 
goblin bidding goblin bidding is is cool it is cool um it's like goblin tribal that has patriarch spitting to reanimate all the goblins after you sacrifice them on the poll right now five color control in the lead over Cawblade. thank you for doing the polls tonight tonos that's been amazingly helpful super super helpful so five color control in a slightly get your votes in now the clock is ticking the poll is winding down vote for the deck you want to see it looks like five color control might pull it out over call blade in madness so it's been a really fun event what do we got what do we got and the poll is done and wow five color control sneaks by call blade by one percent of the vote one percent uh well uh, i guess that means a automatic recount <laughs> uh okay so five color control honestly i will say i was kind of hoping this one would win because this deck is the deck is sweet it is it's sweet this is one of my favorite control decks so this is from shadows uh from uh, shards of alara era and basically as its name suggests, it is five color control. It's got Esper Charm, uh, if you want to crim it up. It's got Sweepers in Volcanic Fallout. It's playing Wall of Reverence, a big fire that gains your life. It's playing Moldrifter, Moldrifter to draw cards. It's got Broodmate Dragon. It's got Cruel Ultimatum. It's got Flashy Plume Veil to block things. It does not believe in playing things on the bottom end of its curve. Everything starts at three. We're playing Tap Lands for days with the Vivid Lands, and it's a sweet control deck. I don't know if this is a good control deck, but this is a sweet control deck. <laughs> It's going to be super fun. Maybe we should play Control more. I mean, honestly, I also enjoy playing Control. And I actually think I'm better at playing Control than playing a lot of other archetypes. Uh, but I tend to avoid it because I think that people don't like it. But maybe if, if you like it and I like it, <laughs> maybe, maybe we should play some more Control someday. How many tickets is this event? It is 60 play points slash six tickets. You get three rounds. If you win two of them, you get your, your money back. If you win three of them, you get 1.5 times your money and a treasure chest. If you win one or zero, then you're kind of kind out of luck. Well, hmm. No one expects the Plume Veil. This hand is, I mean, I guess this is what we expect out of this deck. Like, this deck is slow. We have, we have almost no one and two drops. Hey, Sushi, how are you? 61 card special indeed. Oh, oh. wow, we're up against, we're up against, uh, we're up against Callblade. Okay. The control battle. Maybe the greatest control deck of its era versus a very good control deck from a few years before. Uh, we don't have the Planeswalkers, though. I don't know how we deal with Jace's and Gideon's and whatnot. No, not... Oh, oh, oh Stormforge. I didn't look at the Callblade list. I, I don't know if this is a Batter Skull version or if it's an earlier version. Is it post-New Phyrexia? Okay. Well, I mean, Sword is also pretty good. Would have been nice if we could have countered that. That would have been... That would have been helpful. That would have been helpful, I will say. <laughs> there is batter skull but they didn't get so they must have the batter skull in hand or else that's kind of the obvious thing to get ink moth nexus opponent well you stopped playing what uh what are you playing now sushi are you in the or are you in the no game mode we have a new donation from Stale Cardboard. $5 donation. Hey, Seth, who was the artist that painted the canvas behind you in your Sticky Fingers deck breakdown? Oh, um, I will have to look. It's uh, it's magic art. So in the background of deck techs, it is, it is all magic art. Oh, isn't it? Uh, so I think I think it's this art. I think it's just sticky fingers. Um, Jihan Chu, I think is a uh, is the name of the artist. So yeah, it's a uh, I think just a more like close up higher res version of of sticky fingers actually. Uh, but yeah, I believe that's the the background art from the deck deck. All right, preordain. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. I'll play the island past the turn. So our opponent's going to cheat a... All right, we actually got to look at this list. We got to look at the call blade list. So opponents on call blade, what do they have that can blow us out? So little J's, big J's, mana leaks. Just ma ugh, a lot of stuff. Hmm. Getting hit by this sort of feast and famine is incredibly bad for us. Losing the die roll was pretty bad for us. <clears throat> this only hits enchantments. Yeah, where this is. Well, this is what made Callblade a bannably good deck back in its day. So we got to flash in the Plume Veil now because of Mana Leak, I think. All right. I mean, it kind of blocks. <laughs> it blocks if our opponent doesn't have any of their many removal spells. Jace, Dismember. This lets us play around Mana Leak, but still, it is far from a guaranteed block. But it's the best we got. Opponent. Jay's the mind sculptor. Yeah, losing the die roll is just sort of snowballed this out of control for us. Like, we lost the die roll, so our opponent could get down Stoneforge before we could counter it. The Stoneforge is getting swords, and there's a Jace that we couldn't counter because we had a Plumeville to stop the sword, and now we're just dead. In, in a, I would say, the worst of shapes. Well, pass the turn. Yeah, Stick Fingers is really fun. I think, I really think Golgari has a chance to be good in Standard. I think if there's a deck that can be Is It and it can be Monograin, it might be a Golgari deck. I really like Go Blank as a way to fight against, as a way to fight against the Is It decks. And I feel like Golgari just should have a good, a decent matchup against Monograin. Because you can play the good green cards if you want to anyway, and you get removal that's better. Oh, well, I'm I'm glad things are uh, are heading in a good direction, Sushi. Ooh, Flesh and Blood. Fun. I haven't tried Flesh and Blood yet. If you had a digital client, I would... Uh, I probably would have tried it by now, but... Being paper only... It's gonna, gonna take me a bit. Opponent taking up Jace. Huh. Well... Yeah, this is this is a combo of Callblade. Jace hasn't really dominated modern, which I guess is good. But Well, let's uh let's do some Esper charming. Draw two. Volcanic Fallout. Well, Cryptic Command might be one of our Ugh, advantages, I guess. Pass the turn. About it. Huh. Well, maybe Callblade is just a better control deck. What do you think about the Azorius Party deck? Ooh, uh, what a what Azorius Party deck? I mean, we're likely dead because Jace is on the battlefield. <laughs> so far, our opponent's just plussed it a bunch of times, so it actually hasn't done much, which I guess is better. If they were brainstorming, I think it'd be super dead. But right now, we actually have more cards in hand. We just don't have a good way of pressuring it, which is a problem. About it. All right, sword. Bounces. Plume Veil. Goes to combat. Well, Plume Veil. I'm guessing this means our opponent has Mana Leak. Opponent Mana Leaks. Man, this is just bad in so many different ways. So I assume we're getting Mana Leaked. And again, uh, well, we'll see. Next, we're going to get to be on the... Well, okay. 
Dismember? Oh. Oh. Wow, greedy. Wow. Okay, I think our opponent just threw this game. <laughs> <laughs> ambitions have been broken oh my goodness okay there's there's a chance wow that went incredibly better than i could hey joseph how have things been i haven't seen you in a minute how are how are things joseph um do we want white mana not really well that went as good as it possibly could have went <laughs> like seriously it could not have went better all things considered we got rid of the stone forge we could bounce the jays although we should probably just mull drifter i think let's mull drifter draw a couple cards Uh, play the reflecting pool. Pass the turn. All right. Well, your go, opponent. Down to three cards in hand. Oh, boot it. Yeah, maybe just slamming the broodmate would have been better. You know me. I cannot pass up an opportunity to draw some cards. But getting down the broodmate would be pretty good. I mean, that is a lot of flying power. This is a, this is a wrath deck, right? How many wraths are in this version of Callblade? Oh, none. Interesting. One day of judgment in the sideboard. Okay. Ugh, another stone forge. Well, as long as we're not getting hit by the sort of feast and famine, it's, uh, it's fine. Do you ever have six? I have six quite a bit, but not too much when I'm playing control decks. But otherwise, I, I usually pretty aggressively have six. I don't think our opponent knows the power of brainstorming. If our opponent had been brainstorming, I think we would be in, a, in much worse shape. So many broodmates. I'll go to combat, attack the Jace. Hit the Jays. Down to six. Pass the turn. About it adapts. Plumevale the hero. Oh, uh, opponent's listening to us. All right, opponent, finally. <laughs> finally decides to brainstorm with their Jays here on turn 20. Yeah, if I'm streaming and talking, I I uh I tend to do it slower. The other thing is, if you F6, it goes by incredibly fast. Uh so I think there's some upside to not F6ing when you're streaming. Uh okay. Sure, tech edge. About it. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay. Passing. Oh, not passing. Squadron Hawk. Okay. Get some Squadron Hawks. Well, okay, untap. Zong getting ruins, go to combat, attack the Jays. <laughs> Can we ever get rid of this Jays? Down to four, pass the turn. Yeah, it would be nice to get the dragons into play eventually, that is for sure. Opponent plays a batter skull. Uh, the problem is our opponent's a mana leak deck and very likely has mana leak, so we got to be careful. We're in a very 
we're in a very we're still in a very very precarious situation bounce the germ draw a card We're still in a really precarious posi uh, position because our opponent has all this equipment. And if they need, get in any hits with these swords, like, we're already in a really bad position because our opponent's had a Jace for 14 turns in a row. About it. Picks up the... Okay. Oh, equips the Batter's Gall. Interesting. Goes to combat. Attacks. Well, we block. How do we get through this chase, though? Takes up the Jace. Yeah, this Jace is going to beat us. We just cannot get through the Jace. Uh, we're never going to get through this Jace. Now we have no threats. Like, we can Volcanic Fallout and kill stuff, but now there's a Jace on an empty board, and we don't... And our opponent has a Creature Lands. Like, this this doesn't this doesn't do it. Like, we don't have a choice because we're so incredibly far behind, but this does not... This does not do anything for us. Play the land past the turn. Oh... We're trying about it. Brainstorms. Yeah, I mean, the difference is our opponent's got Jays. They haven't activated it in a very effective manner, but even a Jace activated brainstorming every like third turn instead of every turn, um, still, still a very powerful magic card that we do not have access to. About it. I don't even think that broodmates are going to be all that great, honestly. Opponent finds another tech edge. Has another squadron hawk. Oh, poor five color control. I mean, it, if we cast broodmate and our opponent has left up two mana for mana leak all game, which I think it's like 99% that they have mana leak. But uh, if we just cast Broodmate and they mana leak it and we can't pay, we just lose the game on the spot. Like, then our opponent uh, starts sending us with swords and we we can't, we got to do everything we can to not allow that to happen. All right, we gotta we gotta find a way to get rid of this Jace. I don't know if it's gonna be possible, but we gotta try. Cryptic. Bounce the Jace. Draw a card. About it. Yeah, I mean, if they recast it here, that's great for us. They're going to equip the sword. Opponent passes. Oh, oh, we tried. We tried. We, I mean, we fought hard against turn two Stoneforge into Jace, but ah, it's just an unbeatable amount of value. So I think what we do here is cast Broodmate pray that our opponent does not have a does not have a mana leak and if they have a mana leak then we're going to game two yep ouch well yeah that's that's hard to come back from Callblade is a one of the best control decks in the history of standard There's just no way we're ever going to win from there. But then the Jace comes back down. Like, even if we counter back there, then the Jace just comes back down. There's no, there's just no way we can win from there. This might be a, oh boy. Is there any way we can beat this deck? Like, you can see, the big problem is, 
the big problem is essentially the curve <laughs> and the mana and the planeswalkers. Like this is a this is a deck like two years before the good control cards came out. There's no way we win from there. There's no. <laughs> well, I guess I regret not countering it just so people would see what happened, but. I don't think they're. I think we're like literally 0% to win that game. We ambition and resolve the dragon. Then our opponent gets to play the Jace, and then they get to bounce the thing that can actually box the Squadron Hawk, and then the Squadron Hawk gets to attack, and it untaps all their lands, and we have to discard a card, and then there's just zero. Like, there's zero percent chance to win. I, I mean, my thinking is there's no way we win that game, but, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Jace is... Uh, you don't win games when Jace is on the battlefield for... For uh, for that many turns, <laughs> our opponent activated them in a weird way, but still, there's just no. Oh boy, I don't know if there's any way we win this matchup. Honestly, I'm not convinced. Hmm. <clears throat> I mean, what do we have that's good? Like, what's our what's our advantage? Opponents got Jace. They got Stoneforge. Like, what do we have that's like a legit? modern legacy level threat and oh not a cryptic i guess cryptic is if there's one card that we have that's uh gives us some sort of advantage it's probably cryptic that that might be the one card that like sort of sort of gives us an advantage over our opponent's deck we'll see how much being we'll see how much being on the play helps if we're on the play, we did have the Broken Ambition, so we would have been able to counter the... Uh, is, is Scepter even good? Scepter, is that even good in a world of Squadron Hawks and Jaces? I'm not convinced that it is. And we'll bring in a couple. I think the other problem is just the curve. Like, our opponent has this area of the curve full of really strong things. Our curve is, like, way up here. So our opponent's just getting on the battlefield with stuff, and we're not. I mean, I think we gotta have the... I think we gotta have the dragons just to win. Like, how are we gonna... We don't have creature lands and stuff like our opponent, so... How do we... If we don't have access to the dragons, how do we eventually get our opponent's life total to zero? I'm not sure how we can. About it. I mean, Cruel Ultimatum's a sweet card. I feel like this deck probably can do pretty good against creature decks, but I don't know if it can do well against a control deck that has Jays. Yeah, this is the history of Standard, essentially. Well, I guess we gotta play the Island. I mean, if they just go Stoneforge, Batter Skull, they just... They got us, and we can't answer it. Squadron Hawk. Okay, that's better than a better than a Stone Forge, I will say. Yeah, I think that this is just a matchup that's incredibly unlikely. I think that the five color control deck is sweet, and I think that in other matchups we'll get to see it be sweet. But hopefully, but I don't know about this Callblade matchup. We need a we need a miracle. We need some miracle about it. Glacial Fortress. And what do you got about it? So goal one is keep Jace off the battlefield. If Jace gets on the battlefield, we we saw last game, we lose. So we have to do everything possible to keep that from happening. We also have to keep Stoneforge from hitting the battlefield, because that also Unless we can immediately kill it, pretty much gets us. It's a lot of threats we got to answer. Okay, most more squatter dogs. That is that is okay. Yeah, there's a lot of decks from the earliest days of standard that are really busted that they that they didn't put in, which I assume was on purpose that they that they wanted to try to avoid playing some of the. The really broken, like, turn one combo decks or really fast combo decks. Because if you look at this, this is pretty much... There's not many combo decks. There's, like, Splinter Twin, which is slow combo decks. But there's not really fast combo at all.
Yeah, I think that's kind of the issue is this is a control deck that was just a couple years before they printed like literally two of the best control cards in the history of the game. And Jason, do they have spell pierces? They probably do. Um, hmm. There's three spell pierces. So I guess we gotta negate. Oh, that's painful. But if this resolves, like this also makes us lose. So yeah, I guess we gotta do this to play around the spell peers. So this is Shards of Alara standard. Like Lorwyn Alara. So about about two years. Two years-ish before our opponent's deck, I would say. Something like that. Have I tried pre-modern? I haven't tried pre-modern. How was it? Hey, what's up, Stone Raid? How are you? Good to see ya. How are things tonight? About it. Getting us with the Squadron Hogs. Yeah, I also think we have to counter it. Like, we can't beat the sword making us discard and un untap the mana. That's another big part of it. Well, okay, being on the play is helping. Being on the play is allowing us to counter things that we couldn't counter in game one and do it in a way that plays around spell peers, which is big. So that's giving us a shot. That's giving us hope. Ooh, congratulations, Stone Rain. That's awesome. Um, I guess we keep it. Abodent. Yeah, the Vivid Lands, they're very tapped, but they are good at fixing your mana. Like, that is that is a nice upside. Slow but consistent. Wow, a lady who likes MTG. That's awesome, Stone Rain. Sounds like, a, sounds like the perfect match. Oh, no. These tack edges are kind of obnoxious, too. Hmm. Yeah, these tack... The impact of these tech edges has been pretty big. Opponent. So now we don't have enough lands to cryptic without getting spell pierced. Hits us. Down to 13. Uh huh. Yeah. That tech edge is, is going to be a problem. I mean, we got to go for it, but yeah. Hmm. Well, cryptic. Gotta try. Gotta try. There's a spell pierce. Yeah, tech edge. Can't can't really stop that. <laughs> Could you have cryptic in your own land? Uh you can, yeah. That is that is legal. It doesn't really help us stop the stone forge though, which is an issue. Well, I think that's probably, I think that's probably it now. Yeah, this feels like a matchup that is almost impossible for this deck to win. Good news is we got another, we got another match and hopefully it will not be against Callblade. And maybe we could see a Cruel Ultimatum. It would be sweet to see a Cruel Ultimatum go off. About it. More, oh jeez, these tag edges. Yeah, this feels just like a matchup where we're, so incredibly unfavored that it's not even it's not even funny we were just so, so close to zero percent to win this to win against this deck well i mean the good news is you got to see Callblade, like one of the historically broken control decks in the entire history of magic uh and you got to see it absolutely crush us i think we're just gonna go to the next round like I know we're not technically dead, but the odds of us winning from here are just I don't I don't see a way that it happens. I, I don't think it's possible. Yeah, I mean that's the issue. Like our opponent just has so their cards are just so much better than ours. <laughs> their curve is better, their cards are better. Just everything about their deck is just like our deck, but way better. Yeah, we've seen Callblade enough. On to the on to the next one. See if we can see if we can get a win with Cruel Ultimatum. I feel like our deck has a shot if we run into like a creature aggro deck. 
actually maybe five color where do you think five color control ranks on this list i'm curious so we played battle of wits which probably the most definitely the most unique but also probably the least powerful deck uh, of the 16 we played affinity not unique but probably the most powerful deck or and it backed it up when we played it not losing a not losing a game through the three matches but one of the most powerful decks where do you think that five color control fits on this scale of decks from you know sly john fairies in the middle in the bottom I wonder, I wonder where it actually, I wonder where it actually ranks just in terms of how good it is. What happened if you name batter skull with needle and try to bounce the germ with cryptic? Um, yeah, I mean, you can name batter skull with needle and try to bounce it. Uh, that would potentially deal with the batter skull. There's just too many threats though. There's, there's too many things that we just can't answer. There's, <laughs> they still have the stone forge there's still a deck full of jaces like there's just and they have the mana leaks and they have the counters so there's just way too many just way too many things i don't i don't know i think that we have to get like incredibly lucky to i feel like this is a kind of mat a uh, kind of hand this deck is supposed to keep but i feel like we just got to get incredibly lucky to win that matchup all right uh we will put the situational card to the bottom well, let's see. Go, go. A handful of blue cards with a black and a red. <laughs> All right. Everyone's on the control decks at the moment. Well, we'll see. Who hits the lands? That's going to be the question. Vivid Marsh. Vivid Marsh. About it. Tap land. Oh, no. Oh, no. Please, magic gods. We need the land. Please, please, please. About it. Hits her land drop. Okay, we hit the land, so we're not dead. Pass the turn. About it. Land passes. All right, two lands in a row. That is also good. Pass the turn. Hopefully we hit some non-vivid lands, because these are going to run out of counters. Yeah, the first time would have been great if I had known we were playing a control mirror. Well, okay. All right, let's try to Esper Charm. Okay, non-vivid land is nice. Exotic Orchard is great in this matchup. Well, pass the turn. Yeah, having stuff uh, in common with your significant author is definitely awesome. Well, let's run out a Plume Veil. Not that it really does anything in this matchup, but run it out. Okay, Broken Ambitious is something. Pass the turn. Come here, bear. Come here, bud. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. You can bring your bone with you. Oh, dear. Uh, okay. Well, we don't want our land bounced here, so... Count counter, I guess. Yeah, cryptic on the land seems tough. Well, we'll keep a land. Opponent. How does Exotic Order interact with opponent's Vivid Lands? The Vivid Lands count as all colors of lands. Because it it's any color of land uh, that it could produce. And technically, Vivid Lands could produce any color. <clears throat> Play the land. Pass the turn. <laughs> these plume bells are doing those plume bells doing nothing yeah mr bear was uh mr bear was here wow okay sure that's that is fine the plume bell is doing nothing dying is perfectly fine yeah you missed him so right we'll see if he if he makes it over here 
before the stream ends. He was on earlier though for a for a bit. Um, let's see. Cryptic. I mean, I guess we're gonna try the same thing our opponent did of bouncing a land and drawing a card. We need to resolve this Moldrifter. About it. Okay, all the cryptics. <laughs> well, pass the turn. Cruel domain would be sweet if we'd find a way to resolve it. I guess our opponent's down two cryptics. That's something. Oh, you missed it, Thanos? Well, I'll see. I'll see if he'll come over here. He just woke up. Wall of... <laughs> Sure, Wall of Reverence. Well, let's try this again. Cryptic. Bounce your land draw card. Come on, come on. Can we resolve it? Please. We could really use this tempo swing. Yeah, it is a pretty interesting standard. No, he just got up. It's just a matter of... Come here, bear. Come here, bud. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here, bud. Come here. Okay. Okay, this is fine. I think he'll come over here in a minute. He just woke up and got, a, got his bone, and now he's interested in the bone and not listening all right counter the cryptic okay this is a good swing for us land to the top so we bounce our opponent's land we draw a land our opponent's also tapped out which i think means can we cruel ultimatum do we have the mana for cruel ultimatum untap terror well play the land uh, right. all right, let's think about this. Tap, tap. So blue, blue, red, black, black. Hey, bud. Uh, black, black, red, and black. Okay, this is the payoff. Ha! Ah, we got there. That's the swig. Cruel ultimatum, the key card. Target opponent sacks a creature. Discards three cards. Loses five life. You return a creature from your graveyard to your hand. You draw three cards. Gain five life. It is huge. It is a huge, huge, huge swing in this game. Opponent's down to two cards. Had to discard a bunch of stuff. Winning that counter war. Eventually, because our opponent played a wall of reverence, which I don't know if that does enough in this matter. We play the bloom veil, I guess. So, But uh, winning that counter war might end up with us winning the game. That was that was big that was real big play a reflecting pool now we get our opponent completely out of cards and that'll probably do it black white and blue as per charm you discard two cards opponent being empty-handed it's gonna be tough to get back into this now now we just gotta close out the game do we slam the broodmate dragon and risk one two three four five six seven and risk our opponent top decking us back that's the question that is the question about it. Esper Charm to draw two cards. Okay. We're just going to let that go. This opponent's going to be down to one card in hand. Discards two lands. We're going to remain patient. We got the interaction. Pona's got one card. Pass the turn. No need to risk it. We'll get there. I mean, we're in such good position now. Since we resolved that cruel ultimatum that we will win this eventually. We should win this. Sure, sure. Wall of Reverence away. Wall of Reverence is not really a, a real concern. Um, well, play Plume Veil. And kill the Wall of Reverence. 
Might as well. There's that many targets. So the, this terror art is one of the sweetest arts. Ah, oh, that terror art's so good. One of my favorite. One of my favorite arts in a uh, in Magic Tenth Edition terror. All right, kill it, fizzlet, untap. Volcanic Fallout. One, two, three, four, five. And let's just let's just evoke the Muldrifter. Draw some cards. I we just don't want to take any chances, basically. This is standard through the ages. It is basically oh more volcanic fallouts. It is basically a classic 16 classic standard decks from throughout all of standards history, really. We played Battle of Wits to start with. We played Affinity, and now we're playing Five Color Control. Upload it. Two cards in hand. Muldrifts. Uh, sure. Here, Bear. People want to see you. Come here. Come here. Come here, you can go back to your boat in a minute. Come here, buddy. Come here, people want to say hi to you. Come here. Come here. Come, come here, buddy. Ooh, come here. You're getting so big. You're getting so big. Hey, buddy. There you go. Can you say hi to people? There's people that want to see you. Can you say hi? Say hi to all the people. Say hi to all the people. Aw, see? There's Taunos. Taunos wanted to see ya. Everyone wanted to see ya. Yeah, Stone Rain. Oh, are you gonna chew my beard? <laughs> oh, puppy Stream. Puppy Stream, buddy. He's a cutie. He's a cutie. <laughs> hey, buddy. Did you did you want your bone? Did I take you away from your bone? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, all right. So, yeah, let's just pass. Leave up the cryptic. Good boy, bud. <laughs> the puppy's gonna get you to come out and visit finally. <laughs> he's a he's a cute puppy. He's actually he's been he's been such a good puppy. He's been, you've been such a good puppy bear. You've been such a good. You're gonna you're gonna eat the microphone. Yeah, chew on the microphone a little. <laughs> chew on the microphone a little. Yeah, good boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, dragon with counter backup is where we want to be. All right, you can go chew your bone. Go chew your bone. Go chew your bone. That's okay. <laughs> he will chew the microphone. He will chew anything. That is a uh, that is a uh, the one downside of puppy bear. Gear bone bud. <laughs> All right, sorry. Uh, puppy puppy distraction. Puppy distraction. We're back. We're back. We're trying to win this game. Uh, so that's a clock. That's a broodmate dragon. All right, that's good. We have a way to hopefully actually get our opponent's life total down to zero. Faz the turn. The secret is he's not from Iowa, so he didn't grow up on meth. Glares at my dog. Oh, wow. Your dog grew up on meth? That, uh, I'm assuming that's not healthy. Yeah, he's, uh, he's going to be a big boy. He's already, for his age, he's already a big boy, but... So it's, it's a good spot for him. We got a a nice yard for him to run in and stuff. So I think it's a I think it's a pretty decent spot for a bigger dog. Hmm. Well, let's just Actually, let's untap. We're going to volcanic fallout, I think, to get rid of the blockers. 1 2 3 volcanic fallout. Clear the Muldrifters. Yeah, we're on five color control at the moment. Go to combat. Okay, we should be able to just close this out now. Go to combat. Hit ya. I mean, Cruel Ultimatum is the card. Cruel Ultimatum is the card that if you can resolve it in this mirror, you're probably going to be the one that wins because it is so much value. An opponent, dead. Yeah, I mean, I guess there would be a chance that they would have Fallout 2. Well... 
Scepter seems like the mirror tag. Scepter in, negates in, <laughs> widen in. Was this actually, I'm actually, I've never thought of this as a, a standard playable card, but it does seem like good, good sideboard tech for uh, control mirrors. Wall of Reverence, super bad. Volcanic Fallout, probably not necessary in super high numbers. Celestial Purge, uh, Terror, probably not very good. Pithy Needle does nothing. Plume Veil, Plume Veil, something like that. Yeah, let's try something like that. That could work. Are these private matches? No, it's an actual event that is up on Magic Online. Standard through the ages. It's a event that's up, I think, for the next week or so. So, yeah, if you want to check it out, it's it's pretty interesting. Definitely, definitely a cool special event. Okay, well, this ends. It's fine. Opponents on the play. We got lands. We got counters. We will keep. Well, opponent's doing some big mulliganing, down to five. All right. That's probably good for us. I don't tap land. Go. Can uh, Needle name Scepter? Yeah, Needle can name Scepter. I guess that could be a, a reason to leave it in, just to, uh, just to go after the Scepter. Hopefully, we can just keep it from resolving. The fact that we're starting up on cards probably a pretty uh pretty big deal Ooh, broodmate all right well tap land go shed the turn uh what's legal to play actually the deck list command will uh will show you all the decks there are some pretty Ooh, we have a new donation from from proof that's to get bear a new bone because you got him off of it he does love to chew his bones and uh he will he will appreciate it bear says thank you i'm sure uh thank you so much for the donation proof definitely appreciate it thank you thank you thank you yeah he has always always got to be chewing on something constantly if he's awake he wants to be chewing on something well make the land drop pass the turn about it. I'm gonna try to cryptic a land. Well, in that case, we will cryptic the. Oops. Cryptic the cryptic draw card. Actually, maybe we get them back. What if we counter and bounce? That might actually be better. <laughs> it might be better just to win the mana war. Opponent down to three lands. Did not win the counter war. Adepts. Hey, see you, Stone Rain. Thanks for swinging by. Good to see you. Opponent. Oh, Ooh, evoking a Muldrifter. Okay, this is this is looking pretty good. Because now we get to actually resolve the Muldrifter. Well, Sunken Ruins. And... Muldrifter. Draw two. Feels good to be the Muldrifter player. Ooh. Why did the sideboard tech? Well, let's start the beatdown. Opponent. Adapts. Land. I'll hit you with the Muldrifter. Down to 18. Oh, yeah, they didn't play Rebels. They didn't put Rebels in there. Yeah, hey, what's up, Naz? How are you? Good to see you. Yeah, this is a special event on Modo. Standard through the ages, they're calling it. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, let's just, uh, just draw cards, I guess. Asper Charm, draw two. Untap. Ooh, there's a scepter. Go to combat, hit ya. That scepter could be good. 
Scepter. Oh, Scepter could be really good. Actually, play Reflecting Pool. Scepter. Ooh, what do you say about it? Okay, they got the negate. That's fine. Pass the turn. We're still in fine shape. About it. I think we're getting there. I think we're going to take down the control mirror, Liz. <laughs> Not call blade, but the five color control mirror. Mall drifter. Hmm. One, two, three, four. Yeah, let's counter that. Actually, huh? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, that's that's fine. You can have your Mall Drifter. We don't want to get hit by Cruel Ultimatum. Like, that's the spell that matters the most. Is the Cruel Ultimatums. So... Yeah, blue uh, five color control is definitely a classic standard archetype. Well, run out the widen. Can pay for broken ambitions. Untap. More broken ambitions. Uh, well, play reflecting pool. Go to combat. Hit ya. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I don't think we could. I don't think we'd brood mate. We're going to remain patient. We're going to try to ride this widen, I think, to victory about it down to 13 adapts. And. Bazzing. Sure. I don't play the land, hit ya. down to 10 can the wine go all the way so what are we doing right now seth hey what's up monkey boy uh right now we are playing some standard through the ages we are playing a five color control mirror to wrap things up cryptic uh sure that's fine bounce as a land draws a card attacking literally right now sitting Playing magic, attacking. You know, that's also fine. Go ahead, draw your cards. Do what you gotta do. Opponent draws. None of those spells really kill us. Oh, is this, this was your first standard? It, uh, it is a pretty interesting one, especially five color control. About it. What do you got? Oh, okay. Brood mate. Well, we will counter that. About it. Negates. Well, I guess we have to counter that. Oh my goodness, I clicked, misclicked. Oh, wow. Okay. That's unfortunate. Getting late. <laughs> oh, well, we might lose because of that. We had the mana right there. Apparently, I did not click it. Hmm. That's not ideal. That's not ideal at all. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> well, let's run out our own broodmate, I guess. Oh, my God, this mana. This mana. All right, let's untap everything. Blue, green, red, black, broodmate dragon. 
Ouch! Yeah, that was super. That was a super painful one. Well, play a vivid creek. And now I think our opponent's pretty far ahead at this point. Things were looking good, but not looking as good now. Pass the turn. Like when I played to that diamond Momer where I pass the winning turn and use it for a zero. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Ugh. Uh uh uh. Yeah, well, now our opponent has a broodmate dragon, and we're tapped down. Not great. We have basically only lands. Also, not super great. I'll go attacking. Out of counters. Opponents run a lot of counters. Wow, opponent left in terror. Interesting. Opponent blocks. Well, we will play the vivid meadow pass the turn. About it. Esper charm. Well, we have infinite lands. About it. Uh, I'm glad I'm at the top of the punt rankings. I, I'm glad I'm at the top there at least. About it. What do you got? Goes to Gaba. Attacks. It says. And. I mean, if our opponent has Cruel Ultimatum, we, we're done. And it looks like they might. About it. Trying to figure out a tap for it. Can they do it? If they do, they are rewarded with a win. Oh, it's another broodmate. Well, that also. That also is pretty good. Maybe wine's not good. All right, more lands. Sure. Ay, ay, ay. Well, winning that counter war would have helped. That's for sure. That is for sure. Uh, so. All right, run it back. One more. One more. One more game. Wow, we've got into all the grindy control matches here at the end with this five color control deck. We were hoping to play against some people playing aggro, but it was not meant to be. I feel like sticking a scepter on turn two would make it very difficult to lose. Uh, we will put widen to the bottom. Well, let's see if scepter can get the job done. That is our plan. Vivid Meadow, go. About it, untaps. Exotic Orchard. Now Zungan Ruins. Yeah, not having lands is not ideal, that's for sure. But I do like the Scepter. The Scepter seems like it should be good here, hopefully. All right. We definitely need lands to be able to keep activating the Scepter. All right, opponent has Scepter, and they have real mana. We do not draw. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and we're dead. Oh, no. Oh, that does it. That does it. Yeah, opponent's got mana. We don't, and that is that. Is that. Place another Scepter. Okay. Do we draw real lands? Oh, my God, we do. Finally. Okay. Well, uh, Scepter. You. Well, there's still a little bit of hope. Missing that land drop is absolutely horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. But there's some amount of hope. Our opponent's going to be able to scepter twice, though. So they're going to end up with way more cards and way more mana. So I think, yeah, opponents might just be out sceptering us here. Scepter, scepter, discard, discard. Oh. Jeez. Not great. Not great, not great. Well, five color control has not went well for us. This has been, this is maybe the disappointing one because this deck is a, it is a sweet deck. But has not worked out for us here, yeah. Well, your go. Hey, what's up, Mindset? They're all good to see you. Yeah, turn two scepter would be good, except our opponent had more scepters and more lands. And uh and that makes it tough. 
Well, okay. Scepter, you. About it. Discards a land. I mean, our opponent's not activating the scepters. I'm not sure what our opponent's doing. Cryptic. Well, okay. We will counter. This time we will pay the right amount of mana. Yeah, Cobblades. Definitely want to. Uh, Cobblade, I think, is by far the best control deck in the event. So if you're going to win and you like playing control, I think that's a good one. $50 if you get the win. Well, we'll give it our best shot. Not feeling good about it, though. Opponent, Scepters. And Scepters. And plays a land. I mean, so we're both going to be empty-handed, but our opponent's going to... have more lands. So I guess... I guess it's not that bad. All right, pass the turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're not that far away from being at parity. Like, the acceptors are gonna stop mattering at some point. Very soon. Because everyone's gonna be empty handed. Scepter, scepter, sure. I mean, we technically have the clock. I guess it's just gonna be whoever draws a broodmate, probably, and resolves it. Well, uh, scepter, you. Make you discard. Wow, opponent drew all four scepters. <laughs> Hit you with a ball drifter. Well, who draws a bomb? Who draws a bomb? That's it. Play the land. See what they got in hand. Who top decks the bub? Hey, Seth, first I've got to you the stream. Why do I ask you, uh, how do you not get frustrated with some uh with how broken some cards are? Oh, I mean, I think I do get frustrated to ooh, that's interesting i think i do get a little frustrated sometimes yeah it's not very smart um but i guess mostly i play a lot of different formats and i think that's part of it so if one format becomes less fun or unfun because of broken cards then my normal technique is just to switch to another format so i think that helps so like the peak of standard being horrible um a few months ago i just basically stopped playing standard <laughs> so so that was my kind of my solution to it well okay vivid creek i mean we're actually not in that bad a shape it would be nice if we could get our opponent totally empty-handed but this is oh no okay worst shape since our opponent top decked an answer to our scepter well now i guess we're tap out control volcanic fallout not good well hit ya go go mall drifters we just need our opponent to whiff for four turns down to 12. can the mall drifters get there just like just like lorwin was intended to be played yeah volcanic fallout doesn't do anything opponent plays a land and come on mole drifters come on mole drifters we draw a land that's not doing much we attack with the mole drifters down to eight oh marcus welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big soup cheer for you thank you thank you thank you about it activates the scepter we just guard the reflecting pool land and wrath of god all right well who top decks that is the question who top decks first who top decks best celestial purge is not a good top deck Opponent. Someone's going to top deck a bomb, and that's going to be the game. Opponent activates a scepter. Well, we might as well get rid of a scepter. The top deck battle is on. 
about it. We draw broken ambitions. Would be good if there was not a scepter for our opponent, but oh uh, yeah, we're this is bad. Our opponent being the one that has the scepter left is probably that makes many of our draws dead. So I think our opponent wins the top deck, uh, the top deck battle in general because. A lot of our draws are dead when more of their draws are alive. Yeah, I mean, we got rid of one of theirs, but we're still just handlocked, essentially, to not be able to hold counters. Opponent going to go, yeah, well, okay, burn you. Down to six. Did they top deck? Not yet. Did we top deck? I mean, they could be. They could easily be holding a counter, too. Like, our opponent has the luxury of holding counters, so this is not a great position for us about it. Yeah, we did not did not draw very many good things. More lands, go. Opponent. Yeah, I mean, we got seven minutes. Worth being aware of, but I would be surprised uh, if it comes down to that. Someone's going to draw a real card at some point. Unfortunately, we got two broodmates in the graveyard. Well, apparently two scepters beats one scepter. That's what we learned today. Oh, dear. Here it comes. Hovering. 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 Yep. Uh, fair enough. Wow. Well, I gotta say... I gotta say, uh, five-color control, kind of meh. I mean, it's a cool, it's a cool idea of a deck, and it is a sweet classic deck. But wow, um, this curve is something that kind of blows my mind. This was a thing that people were actually playing competitively, and it was one of the best decks in standard. Like, it really truly blows my mind. Could you imagine trying to play a deck like this today? Could you imagine like being like, okay, my deck is going to have a pithy needle in the one drop slot, have two two one of removal spells in the two drop slot and that's it how would you ever beat any 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 deck in our current standard like how i i'm really unsure so it's really that's probably the most interesting part of this event is you get to see all these crazy things that you would just never see before like this 10 years ago 12 years ago whatever it was this was one of the best decks in its format now I mean, we even saw it struggle against Callblade, but now I imagine, like, I, I couldn't... If someone built a deck like this and took it to a Pro Tour, I imagine they would get laughed out of the room and not win a match uh, in a Pro Tour. Yeah, so it would be... It's really interesting to see how the game of Magic has evolved. So, I like this event. I don't know. What did you think of this event? I think it's going on for another week. We'll probably go back to next week's streams playing, uh, you know, playing Constructed and not doing this event, but... If uh, there's still more decks we could play. So maybe we get in one now and then or something because there's still a couple more cool decks that we didn't get to tonight. But on that note, I think that brings us to the end of our stream for tonight. Standard through the ages. So we learned that uh, Battle of Wits is hilarious when it wins, but not consistent, which makes sense with the 240 card deck. We learned that Affinity kind of insane and crushed everyone. Five color control. We had awkward matchups. I think it's good against the creature decks probably. But we played Callblade, which it is not going to be hardly ever. And then we played a mirror, and mirrors are pretty swingy. Pony had more scepters than us. But on that note, even everyone, uh, reminders, replay YouTube. This we had vital the old streams. Normal YouTube, tons of stuff coming up tomorrow. Modern, much of you check that out. And one more reminder that our sponsor tonight is Card Kingdom. If you need some magic cards, you can get it from over at cardkingdom.com. Most importantly, Thank you to all of you. Y'all are amazing and awesome and spectacular. I hope you have an amazing night. Thanks so much for hanging out, by the way. A great weekend. We'll be back on Monday to have some more fun. So until then, have a great night, everyone. Have an amazing weekend. I love y'all, and I will talk to you soon.